Hey, what's up, guys? It's the old goats. I got Ogre with me, Hoffa. I'm the goat, and we got a special guest today, Raul Batista, highly a comic bro. He's got his own podcast. This guy was my boss at one time, a friend of mine. Really admire him. So thanks for coming on, man. He's a Raider fan, obviously, as you can see. Yeah. And he's going to help us count down all the Super Bowl champions from Super Bowl one. And we're going to go about halfway through all the Super Bowls, and part two will take us up to the current Super Bowl, which today, can we say already? I know the game's in progress, but we can say we know who's in the Super Bowl now, right? Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious. So we're going to have Chiefs, Niners in the Super Bowl. Man, I think that's going to be pretty good. It's exciting to not have the Patriots on there and to see something <laughs> different, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. Anybody. I mean, the Chiefs have been waiting 50 years to get back. Yeah. How cool is that, right? Yeah, that's and fucking awesome. And the Niners like rebuild like fucking quicker than I don't know what. They yeah. sucked like two years ago, and now they're back in the. Well, Super they had Bowl. the second the second pick last year in the draft, man. Yeah. And now they're in the Super Bowl. How cool is that? Oddly enough, like when they went to the Super Bowl the first time ever, I think I have that Super Bowl. I'll tell it later, but they also kind of sucked and like they got right back into it. But without further ado, we got a lot of Super Bowls to get into. Ogre, you're gonna take us from 1966. Well, I'm going to do 1966. <laughs> do it. <laughs> you love it. I'm doing stuff. Well, 1966 is a big year, man. We have uh, mini skirts were popular. Uh, Star <laughs> Trek came out with the first. Uh, the series premiered. It premiered in 1966. It's a big year. The so, Dolphins. Uh, Dolphins and one other. Who There was one other expansion team that uh, escapes me. Was it? Uh, There's a new Picard uh, movie coming out for you Trekkies. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a Trekkie role or an no? Not really, not really. I do it. I I I like the original series. Uh, it's good. Yeah, it's yeah. Good. I the agree. One. The classics. Great storylines in those old. I mean, yeah. the effects. You know. Yeah. yeah deal the, with it. The triples. Okay, back back to the poodle skirts. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ogre. <laughs> So Super Bowl One actually is retroactively called Super Bowl One. It was called the AFL NFL Championship by the commissioner, but everybody who was in the know called it Super Bowl One. Interesting fact: media, everybody called it Super Bowl One behind the scenes, and this happened even up until the next Super Bowl. They kept calling it the AFL NFL Championship. Different world that we were living in back then. Because let, sorry, let's make that clear to everybody what was going on here. I'm sure hardcore fans know, but. This was two different leagues with their champion playing each other. Yeah, two different leagues jockeying for power. You had the NFL, which was a defense and running game-based uh, league. The AFL was a, a passing and, and opening up the skies and all that sorts of thing. They, I'm going to re-edit that. Uh, they were all about the passing <laughs> You're fine, dude. You're fine, man. They're You're all, good. And now yeah, I'm you edit might want to edit that, that edit out. <laughs> so, this fucking hack job. My fucking yeah, mind. no, this is crazy. So uh, the NFL and AFL, they were uh, at odds with each other. You had the NFL was a passing league. I'm oh, sorry. Now we fucked that up. You're good, man. Just no, go just with it, Just keep going with we, it. Just go we with are it. not robots. We're humans, yeah. dude. So the NFL was a... Uh, NFL was a running game and defensive league where the AFL was more open up and, and about the uh, it was all about the the passing game and going downfield. So I threw you off your game asking you about this I, shit. I think so, man. I think so. <laughs> so bad. the these two put these, some lube on that dry run there. Ogre. These these two leagues, <laughs> these two leagues were really at odds with each other. With they had agreements to not sign players, and then they finally broke those agreements, and then it was a free for all. So rather than getting into bidding wars with other with each other, they decided to work in cahoots with each other, and that's how we came to Super Bowl One. Right. So about Super Bowl One, Commissioner wanted to call it something, but he kept calling it the AFL NFL Championship. As I mentioned before, everyone was calling it Super Bowl One, but by the by the number, it wasn't. They, they weren't using <laughs> numerics yet, the Roman numerals. They were just called Super Bowl One. Mm -hmm. But officially, it was the AFL NFL Championship. It featured the twelve and two Packers versus the eleven and two and one Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Chiefs were, I think, a fourteen point underdog. The game ended thirty five to ten. Most noteworthy about this game is Max McGee waking up with a hangover <laughs> and having to play the game in uh, in place of the injured. Uh, Brian Dowler, I believe it is. He catches that first NFL, uh, the first Super Bowl uh, touchdown, which is hand behind a, a, a poorly thrown ball, and he mm -hmm. snagged it in with one hand and ran it into the end zone. Maybe he doesn't do that if he's not hungover. Probably not. The first rushing touchdown is scored by Jim Taylor on a 14-yard power sweep where he set the seal here 
You set the seal here. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he scored the first rushing touchdown. Interesting story about Jim Taylor. He didn't speak at all that year to Vince Lombardi because he told Vince Lombardi that he's leaving to join the 1967 expansion New Orleans Saints because he's a Saints boy. He's from Louisiana. So interesting Saints story. Boy. Nice little that? tidbit. Well, there. not a Saints boy. He's a Louisiana boy. Oh, okay. He's from NOLA. Sounded like an altar boy or something. Saints boy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I have for Super Bowl. Uh, yeah, for Super Bowl one. Oh, the halftime show. One real quick thing about oh, Super Jesus Bowl one. Fucking Christ. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna live a thousand years no, listening no. to the fucking halftime show again. <laughs> The halftime show featured the uh, University of Grambling marching band, and it had two guys in jetpacks. Get the fuck out of here. The yeah. jetpacks, I remember. We see that I all remember the time. that, yeah. That's about was as useful the as Rocketeer? the Rocketeer. It was the Rocketeer. I swear to you that uh, going forward, there will not be as much use, useless information as I just gave right now. So You thought people would be in jetpacks all the time by now, right? You would think so, right? <laughs> right. And we're like, only Boba Fett has that shit. <laughs> all right. Um, so we're going to 1967. And Raul, what do we got for 67? Okay, first of all, guys, I want to say thank you for inviting me here. I am highly a comic bro, but today I'm a Raider. And I am talking about Super Bowl number two. It was between Green Bay and the Oakland Raiders, and it was held on January 14th, 1968 in our very own Orange Bowl. Green Bay coming off their first Super Bowl, well, championship game, right? Coming off, they were 9-4-1 and one after losing their backfield that year. They had a really tough year, and the Raiders were coming in at 13-1. Uh, Green Bay came in after defeating Dallas 21-17 in the famed Ice Bowl. Oakland defeated Houston 40-7. They pretty much just ran through the AFC, uh, the AFL, excuse me, and the MVP was Bart Starr. He was 13 of 24 for 202 yards and one touchdown. Herb Adderley had a 60-yard interception return for a touchdown. For the Raiders, we had Daryl LaMonica, the Mad Bomber, with two touchdowns. And Green Bay was a 14-point favorite, and they took care of business, sadly to say. And interesting enough, it was blacked out in Miami. And it's so weird. It's so crazy, right? Yeah, for real. And it was Lombardi's last game as a Green Bay Packer. Dude, crazy. talk about... So- I know the Raiders are on the losing end of this deal, but like some of the guys on that team, man, they, they had they were stacked. Blanda, uh, Willie Brown, Gene Upshaw, LaMonica, who else? Belitnikov, uh, Pete Banasak. Dude, they were just loaded, dude. They, uh, Jim ben Otto, da- Ben like Davidson, go to Hall of Famers. Jim man. Otto, yeah, they were they were stacked, man. They were solid, and a lot of those guys would come into play in a couple of in a Super Bowl a few years. We'll hear about them later Two today. Years on, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, at this point, they're saying this AFL, this is a joke. We may want to back out of this uh, merger deal. These guys can't keep up with us because they're getting blown out yeah. in, in Super Bowls. But now we have. Are we ready to jump to 1968? We sure are. Is it 68? Yes, sir, it is 68. We got uh, Super Bowl three, which is uh, the Jets versus the Colts. Uh, the Jets won 16-7, to seven, which actually was here in the Orange Bowl again. And uh, Joe Namath was the uh, quarterback for the Jets. Bum. Huge <laughs> bum. Very Over, overrated. Overrated. What do you, and surprisingly, Broadway? Surprisingly enough, he was the MVP of the game. And listen to this. He had 206 passing yards, which is pretty anemic for nowadays. And he had no touchdowns and... He didn't rush for any touchdowns, which that has never happened again in naming a Super Bowl MVP, which would be either a quarterback or of that nature. And let's see, there were 75,000 in attendance. Uh, The head coach of the Jets was uh, Weeb Eubank. Hall of Famer. Yes, yes, he was. He appeared previously on one of our... uh other shows as NFL Origins yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I can't remember what team he was coaching and the Anyways. Jets were this was pretty much one of the biggest upsets in uh, Super Bowl history the Jets were 18 point underdogs uh, Don Shula was the coach of the uh, of the Colts the historical Dolphin coach later on um, heard of that guy actually the Colts were were shut out until the fourth quarter 
uh, Earl Morrow had thrown three picks, and then they they had uh, actually had jo- Johnny Unitas in the bench, and they brought him off the bench, and he scored the only the only the only touchdown the Colts got. It's uh, a pretty fucking good bench. You're like, hey, who you got on the bench? Exactly. Johnny Unitas. Johnny, uh, yeah, Johnny let's, fucking Unitas. Let's fucking try him. <laughs> but uh, he had been it, hurt. I think that's why he had. Yeah, yeah. He was hurt most of the season, and um, oh, he was pretty much like in his in the decline already. He was mm-hmm. like towards the end of his career. That too, and. Um, uh, little little tidbit since Ogre threw his little poodle skirt shit out there. I want to throw something out there too. Uh, a thirty second commercial back in back in nineteen sixty eight was actually fifty five thousand dollars to get a commercial thirty second commercial during the Super Bowl. Wow! Yes! Wow! It's a big takeaway though from Super Bowl three. My image is the. Namath with his finger up in the air as he's going, and I think you even have just uh, one baby, a just one more. Of that. Yeah, just one figure. More. Yeah. yeah, that and the guarantee. So here you have this guy with the furs. Yeah, and yeah he's, it was, and it was he's, considered the classic guarantee game. That's what it was called, the guarantee ball. You know the story about that? He went up and talked to one of the linebackers, Mike Curtis of the Colts, and said, "I'm going to win. We're going to win this game. I'm going to guarantee it." Now everybody guarantees football games. Right. It doesn't mean anything. No. But what you had was a guy from who represented the biggest market in the country. And he was wearing furs, and he was flamboyant, and that's all the. And reason. he was probably drunk like a skunk when he said. Probably, it. I kind of. And that's the, the reason he's in the Hall of Famous for that. What happened? Because he was yeah. a terrible quarterback. He has more right. interceptions than touchdowns. Did you know fifty that? of them? Yeah. No, he has way more picks than touchdowns he has in his 50, career. Fifty more picks than interceptions, and he completed only fifty point one percent of his passes. Overrated. He's a he, was, he was all about the bush, though. Well, yeah, he's a cool guy. I gotta appreciate that, though. I mean, Let me I mean, tell you, though, he must have been a bum as a quarterback, but I would love to take the guy to Flanagan to hang yeah. out with him. <laughs> dude, he ran New York, bro. Can you imagine that guy in New York at that time, dude? Hmm. Come on, dude. When he's like an old man, he's trying to kiss the who is it, <laughs> Bonnie Bernstein? <Yeah. laughs> Guy's a pimp, dude. But he's overrated. Yeah. I heard he was at the Miami Touchdown <laughs> Club, and, and, and there was, there was um, like some like local a function, yeah, and some local. Uh, Reporters were like, you know, bothering him. Egging him on. And, yeah, and he goes, you know what? We're going to win that game. I guarantee. You know, like, they, like it wasn't like he came out and, like, said it, like, mm. supposedly. But he, they backed it up, man. Yeah. Can't hurt him. Can't oh, hate him for that. First Super Bowl to be called Super Bowl officially, by the way. Okay. Nice. And right. this gives the AFL a little uh, legitimacy Two now. Two to one, Because now. they finally yep. uh, evened up the thing. All right. Are you ready to move on to 69? Yes, sir. Nice. 69. Uh, we have... Before I get to the Super Bowl, the Vikings beat the Browns in the NFL championship, 27-7. to um, This is the last NFL championship game winner. There's no, you know, we have Super Bowls after that. No more NFL champions. And on the other side, we had the Chiefs, uh, who, like we mentioned, they're going to be in this Super Bowl, too. Who do you guys think is going to win that game, by the way, right now, real fast? Chiefs. San Fran. Chiefs. San Fran. Who you got, Batista? I got to go San Francisco, man. I, I can't yeah. go Chiefs. I'm sorry. I can't I'm going go, Chiefs. I can't Chiefs. go Chiefs. All right, Chiefs over here, San Fran over there. And the helmets are aligned perfectly for those predictions, too. Nice. We got the Chiefs over here. All right, Chiefs-Vikings. The Chiefs end up dominating this game 23-7. to um, It was played in Tulane Stadium. The Vikings were big double-digit uh, favorites. And why wouldn't they be? The NFL has been crushing the AFL in all these games. And um, – there was wet conditions. The Chiefs dominated. They had three picks, two fumble recoveries. That gets Ogre excited when you say wet conditions. <laughs> Not those type of wet conditions. <laughs> Easy, Ogre. Uh, Len Dawson was the MVP. Uh, coach Hank Stram for the Chiefs. He's mic'd up. This is one of the first times that uh, one of these guys was mic'd up for those NFL films. And, um, you know, everybody's seen those when he's, he's, you know, clapping and screaming from the sideline. Um, what a character. Um, <laughs> Win one for the Gippa. The uh, Chiefs have like a three headed running back attack and a very stout defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, Emmett Thomas, nine picks on the season, Hall of Fame corner they had. And, um, I think that's pretty much it, man, that I got on, on 69. Um, announced team was Jack Buck, Summer on Gifford. I do have that. And uh, we're going to keep matriculating the ball down the field. No, well no. said. Who's that way, well actually. said. Now we're going back this way. <laughs> back to you, Hoffa. Super Bowl five. We got uh, Baltimore Colts versus the Dallas Cowboys. The Colts came out on top 16-13. to 13. It was played also in the Orange Bowl. 
Three out of five. Yeah. So this is the 1970 season, correct? That's correct, 70. sir. All right. We're in the that, 70s. There were 79,000 scandals in attendance. Uh, the head coach was Dan McCaffrey. Um, this was actually the first game played on a first Super Bowl game played on artificial turf. Um, first game after the AFL NFL merger. It was the first Super Bowl. Correct. This was called the uh, the Blunder Bowl, uh, or the Stuber Bowl, or the Blooper Bowl. Uh, both teams combined for a record of 11 turnovers with five picks in the fourth quarter. Uh, Dallas also had a Super Bowl record with uh, penalties, with 133 yards in penalties. The, uh, the cost of a commercial, 30-second commercial, in 1970 was 72000 so you've been following my little facts here. <laughs> it went up about twenty five grand <laughs> from the last one. But that's all I got for Super Bowl five. Couple interesting things about Super Bowl five. First Super Bowl to use a Roman numeral. Correct. Right. Another thing, only Super Bowl were the. I thought you only had one piece of useless information you said earlier. This is useful right. information. <laughs> Oh, and I forgot to mention uh, the uh, Super Bowl MVP. Was, that's the one. That's the one. That's right, the one. Was uh, Chuck Howley, which yeah. was uh, the first time a defensive player mm-hmm. was named uh, Super Bowl MVP. It's and hard. He had, he had two interceptions <laughs> and sacks. Sacks and tackles weren't recorded back then, but I'm sure he had a. You're a missing an up. important. He's the first player from the losing side to right. win an MVP. Exactly. Well, I had that mm-hmm. here then, too. Nice. Very good. All right, we're going to go to 1971. Hey, guys, I'm sorry to bring this one up, but it's Super Bowl six. It was Dallas again against Miami in only, what, their sixth season? Yeah. And it was played on January 16th in 1972 at, again, Tulane Stadium. And Dallas came in with an 11-3 and record, and they were known for not winning the big game. They had lost the Ice Bowl. They had lost the Super Bowl the year before. Dolphins came in at 10-3-1, beating the Chiefs and the Colts, the two previous winners of the Super Bowl. So that's pretty cool. The game did end. It was Dallas 24, Miami 3, lowest points scored in a Super Bowl until it was tied this past year with uh, the Rams, which New England held them to three points, which was incredible to me. But anyway, that's a different game. Ouch. Um, uh, Dallas set records, man. 252 yards rushing. I can't remember who the running back was for some reason. I I I, I can't. Ogre, remember. I'm sure you can tell us. Oh, wasn't that uh, was it Emmett Thomas? I can't mm, remember who the, uh, the Emmett Thomas was a was a defensive player. No, oh, I'll look it up real yeah, quick. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember who it that was. Pre Tony Dorsett. That's yeah, for yeah, sure. it was pre Tony Dorsett. Yeah. They also had the most first downs, 23, <laughs> and of course the fewest points allowed. Um, let me see what else is going on. And the MVP, man, game was totally different, man. Roger Stahlback. If they ran for 252 yards, how is Roger Stahlback the MVP? He going? handed off the ball really good. D- dude, but he was 12. Yeah, probably. He was 12 for 18 for 119 yards and two touchdowns. But he was so popular, dude. There's probably like a little bit of a popularity. Yeah, the MVP yeah, thing back then bro. was kind of biased. Dude, yeah. yeah. He was the first Heisman Trophy winner. To win a Super Bowl. He was like a war hero MVP, too and yeah. shit. Oh, you he know? was so everything. Like, yeah, he was in the Navy. Yeah, people loved him, man. College star, yeah. Heisman. So it wasn't Emmett Thomas, it was Dwayne Thomas. Okay. Dwayne Thomas. Yeah, because Emmett Thomas is a, like an old uh, yeah, DB. But yeah. so you had the Thomas, right? Yeah. But look, man, um, what happened there leads to the next one. Um, mm-hmm. Was that it for... Yeah, that's pretty the, much it. And right. it, I, it's... Going right into the next one. Yeah, man. it's 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 read like a book. Yep. Ogre, you got so, the next year. Next year, nineteen seventy two, Dolphins start off five and zero. They get a, they're playing against the Chargers and 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 Bob Greasy suffers a broken tibia, I think it was, or a fibula or something. He breaks his leg. Earl Morrell. <laughs> Earl Morrell comes in and steps in and, and leads them all the way to the AFC title game. So he, he went about like nine or ten and zero to get them to fifteen and zero. And then they uh, in the playoffs they beat they beat the Browns twenty to fourteen 
on a fake punt by Larry Sapel. Larry Sapel. Try to say that after a couple of bourbons. <laughs> and then they beat, or is it bourbons we're drinking? Huh? What are we drinking today? This is Tennessee whiskey, right? Yeah, Tennessee honey, actually. So smooth. Yeah. It's good. It's good. It's really good. Yeah. So, interesting, the AFC title game, they beat, there it is, Tennessee whiskey. They, honey. Honey Tennessee whiskey. Honey. Honey. They in the AFC title game they beat the the Pittsburgh Steelers twenty one to seventeen. Interesting fact that both games that they beat in the playoffs they did it on the road. They were fourteen and zero and they had road games. Why? I don't know. Uh, actually, I think the answer to that is that it was all kind of uh, rotational by by division champion, not by mm. record. Wow. But they they played those games on the road. And then they played against the Washington Redskins, 11-3, and three, led by George Allen, who traded everybody away, all for you know all draft picks, everything for veterans, because he, he believed in the future is now. The over-the-hill gang. Over-the-hill gang. Who was a quarterback on that? Oh, my God. That's so good. On that Redskins team? Yeah. Was it the... Uh, oh, my God. I, oh, my God. His, his name Sonny was, Jurgensen. No, no. That no? was later. That was later. That was later. I'll look it up in a moment. Okay. I can't believe I'm forgetting it. Anyway, it was 14 to nothing. They had a chance to go and kick a field goal to make it 17 to nothing in a 17 and 0 season. And Char- Garrow, no, sorry, who was it? I had it here for a second. Garo okay. Yapremian uh, gets his kick blocked, and he does one of the most famous Super Bowl plays where he <gasps> kind of throws it up in the air to who knows what, and then he bats it again, and then Mike Bass picks it up and races down the field. And it's 14-7. to 7. Suddenly, with like five minutes to play, the defense has to go on the field, but you couldn't do anything against that front seven. Billy and Kilmer, by the way. Billy, Billy Kilmer, Kilmer, that's it. And the game ended 14-7, to 7, capping a 17-0 and 0 season and the only undefeated, unblemished, untied season in NFL history over 100 years. And you'll, you'll be happy Stop to know. Stop rubbing your nipples, Ogre. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm uh, actually... I'll, furthermore, <laughs> voted this year the greatest team... <laughs> Of all time. I I actually am a bit of a, believe it or not, I'm a bit of a hater on that team. I don't really like that what? team. No, I got to tell you why. Because you weren't born? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even like a Y chromosome back then. Well, you're, you're a little uh, sperm in your dad's nuts. No, I mean, you know the not thing even. Is, you, you know what the thing is, is, that, is, is that as, as Dolphin fans... We fall on that one a lot. Yes. After it's 40 all we have, years. Dude, it's all we have. And I think it's been a little bit of a crutch for me. And so I'm trying to distance myself from it a little bit. Like 20 years ago, I stopped saying that to people. Bro. I would say that like in junior high. Oh, yeah. Well, fuck you. They were undefeated, bro. And I was like, I can't even say that no more. Dude. Like, it's I'm old 40, as shit. It's been 48 years, years bro. bro. Yeah. I wasn't Come even on. born and I'm already like old. You know, it's like I can't claim that I'm shit. old and I was three. How old are you, dude? If you don't mind me asking, I'm 50. You're in your 50s? I'm That's in, not I'm old. 50. <laughs> I'm like in your 50s. <laughs> I'm 50, bro. I was three, man. Come on, dude. I, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of over the 72. Team. Yeah, no. And then you look at the schedule. They did a power ranking on the schedule. It's like in the top 1% easiest schedules ever played. Like we they, were going to the moon they only, and shit. They only played one winning Still. team that entire year, dude. Wow. If you look at the schedule, they played one winning team. So the you eight, as a Dolphin fan, you think that was a fucking hoax? Yeah, dude. What do you mean? Wow, that's it, a fucking bold It was a perfect statement. storm. It was the it, perfect it storm. It was. It, they only played one winning team the entire year. They played the 8-6 and six, uh, New York Giants in week 11, and that yeah, was it. Yeah, dude, but they had one of the most dominating backfields in NFL True, history, but, bro. But, but And but they, needed, they needed a last-minute touchdown to Morris, beat. Morris, kick. Yeah, but Come on, they, man. they fluked it. Along the way, you lose one game And the ghost two. getting mad at you, bro. He's about to take your, jer- your fucking Dolphin jersey. About to kick you off the podcast. The, the, the <laughs> thing is that along the way, you lose one or two games. Look at the Raiders. They lost one game. I mean, that happens. In this case, it was a perfect storm. A super easy well, schedule. You need luck, okay. obviously. Nobody That's else true. is You need it, luck, and the, you got to give them credit because they didn't have a letdown game. That's hard to no, do, I, man. I, Let down, people, you, you play down to your opponents, and they did not. You gotta give them credit, dude. Bro. The Raiders fan is building me up, man. What's going give, on here? No, I'm sick of hearing about it. But you gotta give them. You can't take <laughs> no, credit no. I, from, look, look, I, know? I appreciate it, but I don't want to hear about it every like year. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I'm past that. I want to win in my lifetime. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, Hoffa understands that. Hey. Yeah, yeah, he'll tell you about that when easy, we get to the easy Lions with, Super Bowl. Apparently. Easy with taking the shots at Hoffa. Huh? All right, so who's got 71? That's what I got for. I'm 73. Who's got 73? Well, you know, I warned everybody here. I say, hey guys. 
Remember, the year you're doing, the Super Bowl gets played the next year, right? I think I told everybody mm -hmm. here, right? Okay, I fucked that up. I put 72, and I'm supposed to put 73. So you guys will help me out with mine. Mine is 1973, which the Dolphins are back in it again, so it's not that hard for me to ad lib it right now. On the spot. We'll do it live, like Bill O'Reilly. They play the Vikings 24-7. They win. Some people say this team might, be, have, might have been better than the 72 team. It, it's a lot of the same characters. They just have a little more experience. Um, the numbers are better. I mean, the points allowed, the points scored, it's better. The point differential is better. There was a better team. There, there's something really good about this season. Who ended the undefeated streak? Does anyone know? Do you know? Yes, I know. It's these guys right know? here. Oh, yeah. You guys were kind of like an arch nemesis of it's ours during this right era. Yeah. yeah. Wait, are you sure? I think you're talking about the playoffs. This guy yeah. hates when he doesn't know something that somebody knows. I don't know. Just <laughs> look it up, man. I could right? be wrong. I've been wrong a million times. I am 50 years old. Nah, but you brought it up, so I think you, you're right, and you're a Raider fan. You I think you're on the money, bro. Yeah. I'm going to go with you, bro. I hope I remembered that right. Because what I, what I think happened is that they lost – it, they lost their ability to three-peat in that sea of hands game. They did that, too. It could have been that game, but I don't think so. I don't think, no, because they didn't go undefeated the, the following season. No, no, he's saying something else. Oh. He's saying he and Raul saying they ended, ended our the, undefeated yeah, streak. Un streak. <laughs> you also ended our ability to three-peat because in yes. that sea of hands game, that, of was hands. that an AFC championship game? Or no, that was an AFC divisional game. Yeah, divisional game. Because you guys lost the championship game that year. Yes. In 70, is that 74? We lost uh, quite a few championship games. Yes. Uh, we lost to Pittsburgh quite a few times. Yeah. So look, man, the Dolphins, this is, if you ever want to talk shit about the Dolphins, this was the. If you have a time machine and you're a Dolphin fan, this is where you want to go right in here. Because we went to the Super Bowl, we lost. We had an undefeated season, we won. We went back, we won. The following year, we're pretty fucking good. And then mm -hmm. some cag happens against the Raiders, where yeah. everybody like like yeah. a cheap whore just touches the ball, and like then the guy catches in the back Clarence of the end Davis, zone. a fullback who only guy. caught like five passes yes. all year, yes. by the way, yes. just to make it more. Insulting. But he caught an important one. So there. Yeah. Ouch. Hurt. <clears throat> Hurt so good. Anyways, we haven't even gotten to that pain yet. So, 1974. Uh, he's right, by the way. Uh, week two, Oakland, uh, they lost. Damn. I don't know the score, but they lost. Thank you so much. You are vindicated. Thank you. <laughs> um, just current Hall of Famers involved in that game. For the Vikings, Jim Finks, Buck Grant, Carl Eller, Paul Cross, Alan Page, Fran Targeton, Mick Tinglehoff. Ron Yeri for the Dolphins, Don Shula, Bobby Bethard, Nick Bonacani, Larry Zonka, Bob Greasy, Jim Langer, Larry Little, Paul Warfield. So you got <coughs> dude, big, Good God. big names on both sides. Good God, yeah. man. Yeah, that's like 16 at least. I'm not going to count them. Um, I don't know what else I, I have. I'm ad-libbing here on 1974. It was played in Rice Stadium in Houston, Texas. Weird places. They played in Texas a lot, yeah. right? Is Tulane in Texas or where the fuck is that's that? That's in Louisiana. Louisiana. Oh, okay. Yeah. But all in that... Uh, same Actually, general. a lot of the Super Bowls were played in Louisiana, the early ones. Yeah, there was yeah. two, Either, I believe. We, we yeah, there were a couple in Tulane. And, uh, and on the, uh, the Later Superdome. Later on in the, in the Super Superdome. Dome. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them. Third consecutive Super Bowl appearance. There were 12-2. and two. The Bengals and the Raiders, like you mentioned, were the only two people to beat them. First Fuck the Bengals. First Super Bowl played in a neutral stadium that didn't wasn't played by any NFL team. And I wonder why they did that. Who the fuck knows, right? Greasing some palms. The I don't weather, know what they the did. The weather. You would have to think it's the weather. But why not you? I guess maybe they didn't have a... Isn't that an indoor? Rice? I think Rice was indoor. I don't know. Not sure. I have no idea on Rice. We can find that out. Don't for... think so, though. Isn't Wasn't the... What was it? The Astrodome? The first uh, dome? I don't... I might be mistaken. For football, probably the Superdome, though, right? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Let's not... Let's see. Real Rice... Stadium, it's an American. It's home of the owls. Nah, it's an outdoor. I got a picture of it right here. Mm. Yeah, right. outdoor, but warm weather, of course. All right, um, I think that's good enough on seventy four, right? Oh, that was seventy three. Seventy three. Moving on to seventy four now is who's up? Ogre, you're up. You're up with. Again, the Vikings are back in it against the Steelers. Ah, Super Bowl nine. I got everything listed by Super Bowl years, not by like calendar years. All right. So Super Bowl nine, the beginning of Pittsburgh's. They finally get over the hump. They, a couple of years ago, four years ago, they had the um, immaculate reception. Right. Seven to three. They end up winning the game ten, ten to seven. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Man. It's okay. That still hurts. It still hurts. That that's an improbable win as it gets, man. Right? Because you had the ball bounce bounce off of that was against the Raiders. We had, we were dominating that game. We dominated that game. That was the '72 playoffs. Franco Harris, right? Yeah, Franco. Why the Harris. fuck does so much crazy shit happen when the Raiders are involved? I don't know, dude. It's just luck. Yeah, Pure what's luck. up? The, the Tuck rule. The right? fucking tuck rule. You got the God Tuck rule. The immaculate reception. The sea of hands. You got the holy roller. Well, the sea of hands is in your in your favor. In our but. favor, the holy roller is in our favor. So you, you know. got a lot of named games. Yes, the ghost <laughs> yeah. to the post. Ghost to the post. Yeah. But yeah. the uh, the the immaculate reception was really cool because they they were down to nothing. It was like four seconds. The the uh, Bradshaw throws the ball, bounces off of the fullback Frenchy, mm-hmm. like a fullback named Frenchy, and Jack Tatum was put to hit on him too. But the rule was that it had to hit. Off of a defensive player, defensive player and first. no one can figure that out. You've watched the clips. I can't even He's, figure it out. No. And Franco Harris picks it up off his shoestrings and goes in as time expires, ten to seven. They win. The following week, they lose to the nineteen seventy two Dolphins. You just had to throw that in, there, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I had to. All right, so uh, nineteen seventy four, uh, Pittsburgh finally breaks through the hump. They win sixteen to six over the Vikings. Vikings do nothing in this game. One hundred and nineteen total yards. The Vikings have now lost three Super Bowls. Yes. At this point, it's two, isn't it? No, uh, three, because they lost that that first one. Not the first one, but four. The, the yeah, with right, Super Bowl four. The last NFL champions. They lost to the Dolphins, and now this one. Correct. So that's they've right. lost so, three of the first thirty-three percent of the Super Bowls right. at this point. Right, and they couldn't I like do, math. They couldn't do anything. They were anemic, man. They got picked off three times. They had nine first downs. Uh, in fact, their only score was a blocked punt. Wow. This shit right? was at Tulane Stadium too. Yeah. Was it again? Yeah. So that's all I have. It's the start of four of six champ four out of the next six years the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers <laughs> win the Super Bowl. And it has everybody thinking Bradshaw's and the pretty. The steel curtain was uh, up and running at that point, right? Oh man, yeah. The defensively, that's yeah. Defensively, that team was fucking, fucking nasty. amazing. I've heard they did a shitload of steroids. You guys ever heard that shit? Well, you know, it's okay. It wasn't really illegal at <laughs> back then. No, it wasn't illegal. There wasn't like specific. But I'm sure all of them were. You know, all the teams were. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. They, they were just. I remember them being like uh, <laughs> said that they did it more, like a lot more, more prevalent. But yeah, I'm sure everybody was doing it. There but, wasn't a specific rule. So. But bro, they were stacked. Oh, they, uh, dude, there's the so whole many. team. The whole Definitely. team was like an, an all pro team of the '70s, bro. They were just stacked. Mel oh, Blunt, both sides of the Mel ball. Mel Blunt, Lambert, Lambert, Lambert Ham. Ham. Yeah. Bro, and they look nasty. On. Donnie Joe Shell, Green. dude, and Ham. Joe, Ham was missing teeth, and he would be yelling in those NFL films. The, the receivers yeah. too. I mean, <laughs> Lambert, nasty, Lambert, yeah. Lambert. Oh, was it? Bro, it was Lambert. Yeah, was it? Bro, come on, dude. Stallworth, yeah. Swan, Swan. Yeah, crazy. Fucking Franco, Rocky Blair, their backup running back. Rocky he was Blyer, fucking yeah. Blair. He was Blyer. fucking good too, man. Yeah, he was a veteran, right? Vietnam? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fucking, I read a book on them in high school. Yeah. I remember like, wow, this team's fucking amazing, dude. It was a really badass team. And I hate the Steelers today. <laughs> Donnie Shell. You know why I hate Donnie them? Donnie Shell. Oh, man, a good team. My hate for the Patriots Benny has, Cunningham? has led me to hate the Steelers because they can't beat the Patriots. <laughs> so like by... It's like a domino. By like association? A yeah, like I just go down. Who else can I hate? Oh, these guys, they can't even beat them? I hate them too. So anyways, I always go back to that. I don't know why. Anyway, yeah, 1970. Okay. Hate is good, no, dude, it's not, dude. We're at 1975 season here now. Super Bowl 10, and I'm up. There you go. You got uh, the Dallas Cowboy, Cow, Cowgirls and uh, against the Pittsburgh Steelers back in the Super Bowl. And the Steelers, 21-17. Actually, it was a pretty close game. Uh, the head coach was uh, Chuck Knoll of the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers Hall of Famer. It was actually at the Orange Bowl once again. I think every fucking Super Bowl that I've mentioned has been in the Orange Bowl. Or Tulane. Yeah, popular mm-hmm. places, <laughs> Orange Bowl. <laughs> uh, there was 80,000 in attendance. Uh, clearly, these were the, like the most popular teams at the time, which they're still pretty much two very popular teams. This era made those two teams, I think. Yeah, I think They so. made them what they are. I think a lot of, I mean, a lot of people that even live down here in Florida – there's a lot of Steelers fans and there's yeah. a lot of Cowboys fans. Yeah, but those guys never have down streaks. Like Pittsburgh and Dallas were good in the '90s. They were good in the 2000s. It's like, how do they do it? They no, the maintain Cowboy- it. They both sucked in yeah. the '80s, though. Yeah, that's true. They, they sucked dick. Yeah, in the, in 80s, the '80s they were terrible. Yeah, and it was a good time. They weren't so bad in the '80s, especially the at, the be- at the beginning of the '80s when they- Danny White went to three straight championship games. They just couldn't get what over. What was the their hump. last one though? 
the last Super Bowl? No, the last one of those three championship games you're talking about. I believe it was the San Francisco, right? Which was like 81, bro. Yeah, and that is And then they true. sucked all the yeah, way that is to, true. To, to the, the 90s, early 90s. To the early 90s. I, I have that in my notes. That yeah. last championship game, which they lost to the Niners, yeah. the catch and shit, yeah. that was like the passing of the torch. Cowboys sucked for a decade, yeah. and Niners yeah, right. dominated for a decade. But, you know, a lot of people that live down here like to say they're Steeler and Cowboy fans because, yeah. yeah, they have a lot of fucking Super Bowls. You know, that's yeah. easy, bro. It's but, easy to say you're a fucking Patriots fan. Oh, Dallas, who won the most Super Bowls? Yeah, that's my team. Dallas fans, I associate them a lot with the Dolphins, too. Oh, man. They're Come always on, a dude. Super Bowl this year. Super Ouch. Bowl. Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, okay, so they're both like a little bit fucking... Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're very optimistic. Way. Delusional. Delusional, <laughs> optimistic. I don't know how, what you want to call it, but I associate them together. I'm past that, though. I'm yeah. like... Pfft. Yeah. I got caught up in that. Like, yeah, this is the year. This is the year. Yeah, renew those season tickets. Yeah, let's go. They'll never get back. Anyways. I'm well, sorry. We got off on a we, tangent. We, we, dig, no we digress. Well, yeah. the Steelers were, the steel curtain was full effect Hell yeah. in this year. Their defense was fucking top-notch, punishing defense. They used to fucking bite people in the middle of a fucking pileup. Literally. Literally. Take off their helmets and fucking bite people. Uh, notable f- future Hall of Famers on this team: uh, Mel Blunt, Terry Bradshaw, Joe Green, Jack Ham, Franco Harris, Jack Lambert, Donnie Shell, John Stallworth, Lynn Swan, and Mike Webster. Mike, Mike Webster. Mike Webster. We did not mention him earlier. Mike Webster wow. is the guy, the father of CTE, right? Yes. Yep. yep. Yes. That guy was a lineman, right? He was the center. Yeah. Center. He was, he was the center. And uh, he was living in his car and like yeah. all fucked up. You know, every down, linemen are fucking bumping heads. That's yeah. the one position where everybody's bumping heads. And I think he donated his brain or some shit. Yeah, he's the one that got everything started. Got everything started, started yeah. 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 And uh, t- sad. Sad story. He died, what, in his 50s or, yeah. s- or something like yeah, that? Yeah, he I died he young. But, but they said his brain was like that of like a, a mm-hmm. 90-year-old with yeah, dementia yeah. or some shit. A piece of broccoli. Yeah, man, that's that's fucking crazy. That's a side of football we don't really want to talk about no. and shit. You know, Actually, there's a couple guys in my job that I have ex-football players, and they got that CTE real bad, bro. Really? Well, yeah, I don't want to mention them because, you know, whatever, but, yeah. You might want Inmates, to... I mean, not not officers. Inmates. Oh, all right. Yeah. Oh, I got you. Yeah. So you can mention them there, right? Yeah. Off the air. We'll talk about it off there. Yeah. All right. See you. Uh, a notable mention here in the Super Bowl ten, uh, Lynn Swan uh, was – Football uh, Super Bowl MVP. Uh, he had a 64-yard touchdown to to win the game, and as a Super Bowl record, he uh, he had 161 yards receiving and a touchdown. Nice. And he was he was the only he was the first uh, wide receiver to be named MVP of a Super Bowl. Uh, and to go back to my little little fact here, 30-second commercial back in 1976, 75. Was one hundred and ten thousand wow. dollars? It's getting up there. Yeah, it's getting up. Those statistics relate to today's game. Yeah, one sixty one receiving the touch. Yeah, it relates to today's game. It I mean, for a Super Bowl, for that's a, a Super fucking Bowl, hell of a game. That's a hell of a game that's now. A hell of a fucking yeah. game. That's yeah. a hell of a game now. Can I be like a hater here for a second? I gotta go tell ahead. You, I gotta tell you that like I, sometimes I think of Lynn Swan and um, Stallworth, and I think that, are they both in the Hall of Fame? Yes. Yes. I think that. Maybe they're, I guess they're considering the era. When I look at their career numbers, I know you're a big stat head. Mm -hmm. I I think that there's been a lot of players that. (laughs) I thought you were going to call them dickheads. You can't compare it. You can't compare it to today. The numbers? Yeah. Yeah. I I guess you can't. Especially Swans. Their numbers are not. um, You know who's one guy who didn't get in for like a shitload of years? And I was like, how the fuck is this guy not in the Hall of Fame? How the fuck is he not? Uh, Tim Brown. Yeah, right. it took forever for them to get that guy in, and that guy was fucking for his whole career. He was solid, steady. Uh, he was a great punt returner yeah. early in his career. Like that guy was like always the same, always good, always productive. And they took a for how long was he waiting? Like five, six he, years? He was, like five or six years? The problem with Tim that Brown should have been was, first ballot, dude. But he, dude, he was never on a good team. He was just cons- he was That's a consistent. Not his fault. But he was consistent on a bad team every year. He was good. It's just he was with the Raiders and. You know, he had like a million different quarterbacks. Jace, I got Jace Schrader. Come that, on, that, that should be more a testament to him that it he is. was still good throughout all that crap. That but he eventually, had to catch from. Yeah. it worked out for him. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad he's in. Yeah. This this wasn't just Jim uh, Tim Brown. That was, it wasn't just his or issue. Jim Brown. 
Jim Brown too. Yeah. <laughs> this wasn't Tim Brown's problem only, but you had Art Monk of couldn't course. get in. You also had first Andre ballot. Andre first. Reed couldn't get in. Yeah. Should have been first ballot. So first ballot. I think you were penalizing the era, Terrell right? Terrell Owens was penalized it's, for it's being a that, dick. And it's also well, I got there's a dick. log jam. <laughs> but it was an awesome receiver. Yeah, there was there was, was, there was, a, there was a huge there was a log jam because you were you nitpicking, and you know they were all deserving. And slowly, it, yeah. they started getting. I in. guess as long as they get in, not yeah. to not to be like a Pittsburgh Steelers uh, hater cheerleader, Ooh. but Swan and Stallworth, mm-hmm. even though their stats didn't stack up to everybody else. In the big game, in the playoffs, they up. yeah, these there guys you have were, that. These guys were fucking monsters, bro. These Absolutely. guys had monster games, and they always, they never laid down, bro. And Swan, bro, he was beautiful catching the ball. Well, there's guys yeah. that well, there's, there's there's those the, uh, the, like NFL yeah. films. Bro, it looks like ballet, yeah. bro, like shit, ballet. That guy, Not that I like ballet. That guy was <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> there, and there's guys that pass the eye test. And you're like that guy can play. Paul Warfield. Paul Warfield didn't have the numbers. Mm-hmm. He's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, yeah right. he was from also like that different era, different running teams and stuff. You know, he is from the same era, but um, he played on a lot. He played with fucking Jim Brown, right? He, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. He, he played he on those in, running dolphin teams, you know? So, like, yeah. All right, we're going on 77. Let's do it. I was born in 1977. And so was I. The Seahawks and Bucks were expansion teams this year. It's the last season we had 14 games. And uh, they changed the preseason from six games to four, and they gave us those extra two games. So now we have the 16-game season. The Cowboys, again, they beat the Broncos 27-10. to 10. It's the Cowboys' fourth Super Bowl. We skipped the Super Bowl. Did we? Yes, we did. Just, I'm sorry. You were up, dude. Yeah. My bad. It's okay. We're just going to rewind the yeah, tape. Don't worry about that. I'll edit it out. Okay. We'll rewind the tape, and I'll do this all over again afterwards. You want to do it? No, nah, go. I'll go. You sure? Yeah, keep it okay. in order for it. Okay. Scratch everything I said from the record. Okay. Go. All right, we're coming up at Super Bowl. So what happens when you drink whiskey and try to do fucking shit you got to think about? We got Super Bowl 11. And it was between the the very loved Oakland Raiders. They finally got over the hump after going to Super Bowl 2. They had lost five championship games and they finally got over the hump and they went up against Minnesota in their fourth Super Bowl. The Purple People Eaters, amazing team, but thank God the Raiders came through. It was held on January 9th, 1977 in the Rose Bowl. Oakland came in at 13-1. and Again? Yes. Wow. And they defeated New England and Pittsburgh. They got over the Pittsburgh hump. And the Vikings came in at 11-2-1, and defeating the Redskins and the Rams. Super Bowl 11, right, Ro? Super Bowl 11. So we've lost... Four Super Bowls on the Vikings in the first eleven. That's the just first 11. fucking crazy. Dude, they were an dude. amazing team. Fran Tarkenton. Um, the uh, what was it? The Purple People. The Purple Eater? People. It is Carl Eller, Jim Marshall. Man, they were amazing. Yeah, uh, Alan Page. Man, one of my favorite all-time players. Just great team, but they just could never do it. That's a fucking terrible nickname for your fucking the purple, defense. Pur- <laughs> nah, but it, no, it fit I mean, them, it was a little, the song, the song, the bro, song. Bro, yeah. it fit them, dude. Yeah. yeah. Talk about a bad <laughs> MVP. <laughs> it's a Raider MVP. But, man, these statistics, like we were just talking about Swan, it doesn't right. match up, man. Belignikov won the MVP <laughs> four for 79 yards. The point being Did is... Did he have any TDs? No TDs. No TDs. The thing, they set up touchdowns, and they were key catches at the right time. That's why there he was you go. awarded Critical that. moments. Critical moments, exactly. And what else? And it's also famous for the famous Willie Brown interception on NFL films, just... That's Gl- awesome. Gliding yeah. in slow mo. Come on, I if we you can can't put beat that, that man. In. And the Raiders yeah. dominated them, man. The Raiders had. A, we were talking about Pittsburgh. Raiders were stacked too, man. They yeah, they were. That was all a great Super, all Bowl. Lo- great Super Bowl, man. But they took it to them, and uh, yeah, man. Raiders, Pasadena, California. Raiders win one. A lot of them. Hundred and three thousand in attendance. That's yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah, that's dude. A lot crazy, of Super Bowls man. were played there too. Yeah. Early yeah. Ones, early the weather. Ones. The weather yeah. uh, mm-hmm. situation. Why? Florida and California a lot. Why can't we do a hundred thousand in the stadium anymore in the NFL? Well, you know. they can't. You don't think because you got HD TV. <laughs> so do you think? I guess they know. I mean, fuck. Why am I questioning this? They must know. If you start building a hundred thousand stadiums, you're gonna get like thirty thousand empty seats. On stadiums. a regular basis, maybe for a Super Bowl it's different, but yeah. 
Well, I know the college. I know Michigan has like over a hundred thousand in attendance. There's a lot of them, yeah. But they're fanatics. It's the college kids. It's only what ten games. There's a not year, much to do years. around, exactly. probably. Right, right, right. Exactly. So I guess they don't think uh, NFL teams can support on a consistent basis a hundred thousand yeah. people. I think Arrowhead is the only like NFL <laughs> stadium that has like that college atmosphere. The college feel. Kinda, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. It's loud as fuck. Yeah. All right, dude. Uh, is that it for seventy six? 76. All That's right. Done. Now, we're really in 1977. I was born again in 1977. <laughs> the rebirth of the goat. <laughs> the That's me right there. I saw that earlier, man. Hey, this is the a young handsome buck. kid, I figured bro. that's who that was. Yeah. They say that's me. I'm not even fucking sure. You're like sure. the Cuban Gerber, baby. There's no fucking pictures from Cuba. They're like, that's you? Yeah. I'm like, all right, fuck it. That's me. Anyways, um, so the Seahawks and the Bucks are expansion teams. Again... I've already said this shit. I'm not sure if you're going to out. Last <laughs> season with 14 games, the preseason moved from six to four. Um, that's six preseason games. That's stupid. That's too. rough. But the guys would get into preseason to get in shape and shit. You know, that was the problem. You know, now dudes are like working out off season and they're in shape and shit. They would come in to get in shape. The NFL starts to have a problem. They, they score 17.2 points per game, which is their lowest scoring games since 1942. So they, some rule wow. changes. Yeah, some rule changes are implemented um, for know. better offense. Uh, many preventing things that the defense could do, a lot of them having to do with the, the Raiders. Raiders yeah. <laughs> so, you know, they start putting in a lot of these rules where they give the players a little more freedom. Um, we have in this game, I haven't even said the fucking teams, Cowboys beat the Broncos 27-10. Um, Landry is the coach. There's 10 future Hall of Famers. We got Dorsett, Staubach, Randy White, uh, Mike Dicka's in there as a coach, Tex Graham. Um, the Broncos QB, um, this added a little bit of uh, another layer to the Super Bowl. Broncos QB was Craig Morton, who was mm-hmm. a former Cowboys. Morton. Cowboy, yeah. Yeah. It's the first of four Super Bowl losses by the Broncos. So we got, we got a couple – we got the Vikings who are a big loser, and then um, the, Broncos <laughs> the Broncos are, are becoming uh, or starting to become uh, big losers. It was the Doomsday defense versus the Orange Crush defense. Um, it's a little better than the Purple People Eaters. They had way fucking better names in the 70s. They do, man. Fucking... Even the Purple People Eaters. That's a great name, yeah. man. It's yeah. a great name, yeah. Orange Crush Tom Jackson. We all know him from yes. fucking uh, Primetime, NFL mm-hmm. Primetime. Rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. Stumbling. Lyle Alzado. Yes. Oh, He's on the steroid team. king himself. Yeah. Um, the Cowboys defense dominated, man. Eight turnovers. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think this is the only time we had two MVPs, Randy yes. White and Marvie, uh, Harvey Martin. Ha- Harvey Martin, yes. Yeah. Uh, they had Drew Pearson at Two Tall Jones was also on there. Um, they basically dominated that Super Bowl. Um, bro, Randy, Ma- Randy White, bro, that guy was a mo- They went from Bob Lilly. To Randy White. And Randy White came in as a linebacker. They put him at defensive tackle. That guy was a horse, man. A monster. Monster, guys. That's all I got on 77. So let me not fucking skip anybody this time. We're going to 1978 season. And that's you, Ogre, right? Yeah, Super Bowl lucky number 13. (laughs) Uh, This one is a rematch. Uh, We have... Pittsburgh, 14-2 and two versus Dallas Cowboys, 12-4. and four. Big thing to take away from this game that I always think about is that picture of the tight end who drops the pass in the yeah. back of the end zone on in the third quarter. Uh, it was 21-14 at the time. Can I throw in a Miami story about that? That hurt, man. God, I hurt. Were you going to throw it in now? Real quick. Yeah, yeah. right, because it has yeah. to do with that. You know who was supposed to have that job? And he said it on the air a what, few times. As tight end? Yes. Yes. Who? You know? Yeah. Jim Mandich. Really? Wrong. No, I did not know. I yeah. thought it was Dicka. I, he said it on. He said it on air. I think Dicka was already coaching because he was coaching in okay. my previous. Super. He said it on air. It was at the end of his career. Um, they had called him for a tryout and they didn't sign him. And he always said, "You know what? If I was fucking playing tight end, I don't drop that ball. I catch that ball." So Easier he, said than done. You know. I, I know. Monday morning. But I'm glad he said it. Who was the tight end? Jimmy. Jackie Smith. Jackie Smith. A Jackie Hall of Smith. Fame. Yes. Tight end. Yes. yes. So but in, sad. In the back end of his career, because he had played 15 years with the Arizona Cardinals. St. Louis. Or, uh, St. Louis. St. Louis Cardinals. Sorry, I'm, I'm too modern day right now. With the St. Louis Cardinals, yeah. so he they they actually coaxed him out of retirement yeah. to play. That one season, Dude, he was a stud. He was, he was great. A stud. But if you look at the replay, he trips up it on his own feet, Bro. and he just couldn't. 
And then he does that little kind of jig in the end zone. You know what I'm talking about? And he, yeah. And if you take a picture. <laughs> jig. Yeah, he yeah does, dude. He kind of like. He does a jig yeah. in the end zone. You know what I'm talking about? Have yeah, you seen it? Yeah, bro. It hurts, He, he does a jig. What's a jig, first of all? <laughs> he yeah, does like fine a little, jig. Yeah, he does like almost like a convulsion. Like a convulsion. <laughs> <laughs> he convulsions in the end zone. And, there's, and if you take the picture right, because someone oh. took a photo. He looks what like you do with the sex robots. <laughs> yes. There you go. <laughs> he looks like he's levitating in yeah. the air, right? Yeah, I'm going to put that picture in. And I think they commentated the saddest man in the the world yeah, or oh yeah. My and God. they felt bad for him i mean look but that was horrible now it was it was 21 14 at the time of the drop they end up kicking a field goal 21 17 so they lose four points on that they score two touchdowns late in the game dallas mm-hmm. does one on an onside kick recovery then they score right after that but it was too little too late 35 31 pittsburgh wins their what third i think yeah they have one yes, more left yeah third. you're right so that is what i have for 1978 the levitating Jackie Smith <laughs> for your for your approval. Little titillating. Little tidbit. This is the first Super Bowl I remember watching. I'm glad and, you mentioned that. Yeah. I'm gonna ask everybody here. So, that was the first one hey, that I you're, remember. You're officially the oldest goat to ever be on the show, so <laughs> Good. you, you know also what? have you that know, distinction. Yeah, you know what? I didn't shave for it either. You know, I wanted to. No, no, sure we need to leave. Represent. It. We need to show. I, I wanted oh, yeah. to represent. Yeah, to represent, man. All right, uh, Hoffa, you're up next. Super 19... Bowl 14. 79 season, played in 1980, Super Bowl, which one, 14? Yep, all played right. in 1980 uh, during the Mario boat lift where all the Cubans came over. All those I'm, Tony Montana. I'm, I'm sure four months like, away from I'm getting sure on that boat. everybody was ecstatic about that. Did you come on the boat, dude? No, I didn't. Did you come on the boat? No, I was born here. <laughs> I came on the boat, dude. Why, did you? Yeah, really? Bro. Yeah, dude. Very nice. I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> no, hey. I'm here, bro. Dude, dude, I'm sure it was a pleasant here, trip. You're I'm here, here, man. Yeah. I'm sure it was it's up there matters. with uh, Carnival all that Cruises. Matters, exactly. Thank you, mommy, puppy. Um, Super Bowl 14 was the uh, L.A. Rams versus the Pittsburgh Steelers once again. The Steel Curtain. And the Steel Curtain dominated the Rams 31-19. to It was played in uh, Rose Bowl, Pasadena, California. And there was 103,000 in attendance. Look at that. 103,000 fans. Fans in a Screaming fans. Now, the Rams are losing a lot of fucking Super Bowls, right? Yeah. No, I mean, this is the first one. This is one the they, first one that they're in. Were they not mentioned earlier? No, not yet. Oh, we Vince mentioned Fer- them in advance. We yes. talk about, okay. Vince Ferragamo. Wow. Is that who's the quarterback there? Wow. Yes, it is. Yep. That's a name from the past. And the, uh, the head coach was still uh, the Hall of Famer, Chuck Knoll. Uh, the Steelers were defending champs. And were favored by ten and a half points. They it covered. Was, yeah, and it was actually it was the first. In the first half, it was a pretty close game uh, until Terry Bradshaw in the second half lit up the sky, throwing bombs. Um, Bradshaw was named MVP with uh, actually this guy had pretty fucking nasty stats even for nowadays in a Super Bowl. He, uh, he was 14 of 21 passes uh, completed, 309 yards, and two touchdowns. And the uh, cost of a 30-second commercial in this Super Bowl was $222,000. That's all I got. All right. Uh, we are moving on to Super Bowl 15. All right, guys. Super Bowl 15. It was between Oakland, my Oakland Raiders, and Philadelphia. It was held f- on January 25th, 1981, and it was five days after the Iran hostages, the American hostages, were released. So it was a very a lot of patriotism going on during the Super Bowl. It was held in NOLA, and... Man, I love the Super Bowl. The Raiders had actually lost to Philly during the regular season. Oakland came in 11-5. and five. They were the first wild card to win a Super Bowl. They played three away games. They played Houston, Cleveland, and a classic, classic game against Brian Sipe and the Browns. And then they beat the Chargers at home. Excellent. I remember this. I was by the TV. Love it, love it. The Raiders won 27-10. The MVP was Jim Plunkett, the second Heisman Trophy winner to win the MVP. He went 12 for 21, 261, and three touchdowns. In my opinion, they got it wrong. 
It should have been the linebacker. He had three picks. Oh, my God. How can you not be an MVP with three picks? Exactly, man. And I can't remember his name right now. Uh, Rod Martin. Rod Martin. Right. Three picks. Let me ask you a question, dude. What is it with the Raiders and Heisman Trophy winners? They love them, dude. They love them. They, lo- they, they just love them. They love speed and Heisman Trophy winners. And they're fond of each other. And, and, got- and big arms. <laughs> I see you all fucking excited right now with the Super Bowl. Why are you a Raiders fan? Obviously, you were already a Raider fan at this time. Yes. How do you get to be a Raider fan? The, okay, we were talking about this before the show, guys. The uniform. I saw them. I used to be a Pittsburgh fan at this time. I saw them in 1978. They were coming down the tunnel. They had lost to the Chargers. And I just saw them coming down the tunnel, defeated. And I saw that silver and black. And I was like, who are the, what, what team is this? Next day, I went to North Hialeah Elementary, checked out the Oakland Raider history book. That I did they used that to with have. the Steelers, yeah. Man, and I just fell in love and I just got immersed in the history. Did and you get a bristling black mustache after that? <laughs> I got a porn shot. I love that song, dude. That's dude, so it, fucking that, badass. That's going to be coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Autumn, the the autumn, the autumn Wind. wind? The yeah. Autumn Wind is a Raider. John Facenda. Yes, John fucking Facenda. Fucking badass. All right, sorry, man. They also had one of my favorite all-time players. Probably not the best nickname, but Lester the Molester Hayes. <laughs> was that his nickname? Oh that was his that's name, dude. He was the Molester. Nickname. That nickname would not Let, fly no, today, dude. No, no, no. He was the defensive player of the year that year. Dude, he had 13 interceptions for 200. Nobody s- thought that was a bad nickname. <laughs> no, it, it, it is now. 273 yards. And he was also the Stick'em King. I thought you were going to say he was also a child molester. No, no. <laughs> no, no he, he was, was also child. a sex offender. Yeah, actually, actually, he was a very ba- he, he was he had a very bad stutter. Mm. After the uh, Super Bowl, he was interviewed, and it was it was hard to, you know, I felt bad for the guy. I was like, I didn't know what a stutter was at that time, and I felt really bad for him, but he, he overcame it in later years. We had a guy on one of my seasons earlier in the other Origins who the quarterback that had drafted this guy in the first round, and he had a bad stuttering problem. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine? A, a, a co- defensive player can get away with it, exactly. but not a quarterback. No. You know, you got to relay the plays. So, yeah, wow. One uh, more tidbit. That Nick, you, that's it must been, have been a shitload of false starts. That nickname starts. has been the biggest. I forgot about Lester that. Lester the Molester, man. Holy shit, dude. And another great tidbit. Tom Flores. Man, those awesome cardigans he was wearing and shit. First Hispanic. <laughs> First Hispanic coach to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Props to Tom, to, to Tom Flores. Man. Hell yeah. Dude, Props. one of my takeaways from this Super Bowl is that, um, dude, our battery's running low on... on... Plug it in, dude. It's not plugged in. No, no. We, we, we got we to gotta take care of that. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Find the plug. I got another good thing. Put Fit- that in, dude. Philly was stacked that year too, bro. Yeah, what what's Philly got going on that year? Philly had Jaworski, they had Wilbert Montgomery, and they had Harold Kaim- Carmichael, right, six seven wide receiver man. All right, so I'm gonna come back to where I, where I was. Okay, where were you? Uh, one of my big takeaways <laughs> from that Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> where the fuck were you, ogre? <laughs> one of my big takeaways from that Super Bowl is that I was a kid uh, in the you know late 80s i would read and watch and all the nfl films and all that shit and one of my favorite things about jim plunkett is that guy had more pimples than me (laughs) so he was like uh inspiration his face was like all like like a pepperoni pizza (laughs) yeah crater face yeah he did he had a crater face dude the raiders were amazing man he threw like an eight at the time it was the longest play in super bowl history to kenny king on the sidelines man he just got it over the (laughs) defender's hand Bro, touch the guy. The guy was money. The Let me ask you this: Should he be a Hall of Famer? He's not. He's not. I don't. Um, I don't think he has enough. I think he should be. Did he win two Super Bowls? He won right? two Super Bowls. Uh, I think that should. Oh, that's, like, that's tough. He won two Super Bowls, and his numbers were actually good. He start, He was the number one overall pick out of Stanford. He won the Heisman Trophy. He went for New England. Played a couple. Of, yeah, I think he played five years. Had a, actually Rookie of the Year in we, his first year. We, then he went to San Francisco. And then he came to the Raiders, and he only, he got to play because Dan Pastorini broke a leg earlier in the season, and then he just took him from there. When did he play at last on the Raiders? Like eighty nine or some shit like um, that. I believe it was. I believe it was eighty five. Well, I think he played later than that, dude. Because he I, retired during the eighty eight preseason. Really? Like they brought him. Okay, but did, they took him out. Didn't they bring him back after that? Mark no, Wilson took. O- Mark Wilson came over for him. That was and he started starting. Dude, whatever. That was eighty three. Mark was, Wilson came yeah. in. Whatever year that Monday night game where Bo Jackson faced off against Bosworth, oh. 
Jim Plunkett is on the sideline as an old man, and they're trying to fucking get him into shape to play quarterback for the Raiders. I don't know what year that is, but I vividly – I saw that game not too long ago because I like to watch well, more games. I'm a dork. And uh, that he was on the sideline. His, his argument is that he's a, a 500 quarterback, 72 and 72 lifetime, mm-hmm. and he's got 34 more picks than touchdowns. But look, the hey, same he, thing can be said about – he Joe won, Namath. He's he better won, than Namath. Yeah, exactly. he won twice as many Super Bowls as Namath. Twice as many. All right, guys. I think we got to take it to 81, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is it whoa. 81? I'm, jump Are in, we? I'm jumping ahead. That was the 81 Super Bowl for the 80 season. Yeah, so we got to take it to 1981 right, season, right. 19 uh, Super Bowl played in 1982, and that's me. And this is the 49ers and the Bengals. Niners win their first Super Bowl. 26-21. This is the follow-up to that catch game that we talked about oh, earlier oh. Where, where Montana makes that running. We've seen this play a thousand times, NFL films everywhere. Dwight and Clark, Clark catches Dwight that Clark. ball and, you know, kind of ends that cowboy run and starts this Niner run. Um, Stickham was outlawed because of Lester Hayes yes. uh, for this season. Um, they called it the Lester Hayes or Fred Belitnikoff yeah. rule. Yeah. No. Um, we talked about this on another podcast, so I want to mention it. I think we talked about it on the Patriots one. This is where they start announcing players wearing illegal numbers for their position. So they report to the referee. Right. So, like, if you're not wearing at the time, like, a receiver number, but you're lining up as a receiver, they're going to announce, you know, number or whatever is eligible as a receiver right. or some shit. Uh, Silver Dome is the first cold weather Super Bowl. We got Joe Montana versus Ken Anderson. Um, this is the first of four Super Bowls for Joe Montana. And, and if you're a Dolphin fan and you still want to have uh, delusions of grandeur, the Niners were 6-10 and 10 and 2-14 and 14 the previous two years. So you can turn it around quick in this league. They had an amazing draft, though. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, the Dolphins draft good, dude. Do you think the draft and Dolphins draft good? Let me just ask you that. Because right now? I just told you they draft good, but From, I'm going to ask you. In what time? In general, you? lately. In the last 10 years, do you think the Dolphins w- draft good? I would good? say no. yes. No, I would say no. I would right. say yes, but they they don't hold on to their players. That's a different question, though. Yes, you're right. They don't keep them, but they draft good. If you look into it, the Dolphins draft pretty fucking good, but they don't end up keeping a lot of those players. Just And I know you argue with me. You don't like it. I see the look on your face. It's true, though. They draft good because... Charles Harris is a bust. He's a bum. All right, but don't Deion look, Jordan. Uh, Chris, Deion? I, don't, I can't judge this, a draft. This guy, Chris Wilkins, did nothing except I can't, take up space. I guess that's his job. I, mean, don't, I don't know. Don't, well, that guy's only, it's only been one year. I, I know. I, I give that's a guy the, the benefit. Right, I'm giving him on that one. I think they draft good. They just, they're free agents. Picks oh, that, that's terrible. T- terrible. But that's you, terrible. The, the I agree story that. is not written on those guys yet. Yeah. yeah exactly. No, on, on Charles Harris, I think it's done. Let me just talk about guys. Bum. Guys whose story has... I already did this once. The people who the story has been written on, there's a lot of good players that they've drafted, dude. Everybody has misses. Dude. Who was the defensive tackle that they got? I mean, the offensive tackle that was the number one overall pick? Jake Long. I think he was great, man. He was a good player. And then he, he got was, injured. I, th- I thought he was yeah. solid. Solid NFL player. I thought he was solid. Dude, even... Uh, what's the receiver from Ohio State that we had that everybody was so pissed? Ginn? Yes, Ted Ginn Jr. Mm-hmm. Solid. He's had a solid He's a career. Nice career. Yeah. Solid. He's had a nice career. He's been with the Saints for fucking like what, solid like seven NFL years. career, dude. And with yeah. Carolina, he played in the Carolina. You, you know what happens to the Dolphins? Sometimes they draft a guy too high, and then they got to live up to that draft yes. position. But that guy's had a good NFL career. Yeah, he's been solid. Ryan Tannehill drafted way too high. When his story is written, if he were to retire tomorrow. He had you, a solid you would career. say he had a pretty good career. He was a starter most of his career. Until maybe, today. Maybe he was, he he was drafted too high coming out as a receiver, only yeah. one year of experience as a quarterback. That was risky. That was a risky pick. I'm sorry. Dra- yeah, big time. They yeah. were desperate. They were desperate. Jarvis Landry, Kenyon Drake. We talked about some of the guys, dude. Those are like second and third round picks. So yeah. no, you hit on those. Those are hits, though. They're, those they're are hits, hits, dude. What they I have- guess you've talked me out of the ledge kind of Leslie Nielsen style here on this one. <laughs> But, I mean, just let's ask him. Though, Seven like, dildo. How, what do, you, do you think the Raiders draft good? No. I think, Don't you even know what? ask me. Actually, I'm fucking last, you just on the step. I think do, last year's draft was amazing. Do you think the Dolphins draft better than the Raiders? I wouldn't put them above them, but I wouldn't put them under them either. I think they're, they're not good. They, have, they don't got a good history. 
Uh, they I, might be even worse. They might be even worse. It, I'll argue it to the death. I think the, the Raiders Dol- might, the be, might be. Dolphins draft. I mean, with well. the Lions well, with Matt Millen, there's no way I could fucking argue with anybody taking right. bad draft. But, but you can't. You can't three, compare what was it. Three receivers because you've yeah, got back uh, back uh, who's the GM <laughs> making the decisions for the Dolphins now? That was Matt Rear. Millen. That was a Raider. It's like Matt his second Millen. or third year right now, right? But he's been involved for a long time. Okay. In that, he was a part of that Trident thing where, like, he had a little bit of say. Tannenbaum had a little bit of say, and what's the other guy's name? Spielman. Yeah, had a, like it, it was like always. Now he's on the and, hook. And they had a guy named Dennis Hickey. Remember Hickey? Yeah, I remember him. All right, let's get back to it's 1981. <laughs> that's, um, why I, that's why I mentioned it. The Niners had a, a great offensive line in this year. Um, they had a rookie by the. You know, that's a common theme. If you have a good offensive line, you're gonna be. You're gonna be good. It's man. gonna be easy to be good. It's you, be know? Easy. you can get by with like not a great quarterback. The hog mollies. You can get by with not a great running back. You know all that stuff. The line makes um, the running back, I believe. Yeah, line and defense. That's what yeah. you want. We had a rookie by the name of Ronnie Lott in this game. Um, the Bengals had a deep threat rookie by the name of Chris Collinsworth, thousand yards, eight TDs for the season. Um, on the O line, the Bengals had a couple. Really fucking good lineman, uh, Montoya and Anthony Munoz. Excellent. I'm going to take it to our sponsor real quick, Man of Action Figures. You can get a lot of helmets, action figures, toys, collectibles. Wrestling. Wrestling, uh, movies, comic books, uh, whatever, dude. If you want some, like, 3D representation of something you like, check out manofactionfigures.com. Toys, collectibles, statues, prop replicas. The punter for the Cincinnati Bengals was a dude by the name of Pete McNally. The reason I'm mentioning him, you guys remember starting lineup action figures? Mm-hmm. They were like the first sports figures you can get before modern day McFarland figures. Yeah, I had a and few, all that. yeah. Okay, Pete McNally, he invented starting lineup figures and he pitched it to Kenner at the time, which is not even around. Wow. Yeah, they're part of Hasbro. He actually has a figure. Pete he was McNally. a good player. I remember him. Yeah. He also played receiver. Receiver. Which was Exa- weird. Exactly. He yeah. was a receiver. Yeah. Yes. Receiver slash punter. He, was, he was good, man. Yeah, I wacky, remember that name. Yeah. Wacky thing. So he ends up inventing the starting lineup, which are the first like sports licensed football figures, I think. And uh, that's an interesting tidbit because of our sponsor, Man of Action Figures. Just thought I'd throw that in for you guys. Um, I think that's pretty much it, man. Um, Montana think- to Clark. Go ahead. There was a, I'm sorry. There was a tight end. I believe that set a record with most catches in a tight end. I believe for for a game in the Super Bowl. I believe his name was Ross. For the Niners. For the, no, for the Bengals in that game. Yeah, it was it was a close game, dude. It was. Uh, it was a very tight game. Yeah. They had the big goal line. Uh, the the 49ers had the big goal big goal line stance with Hacksaw. It was Dan, Dan Ross. I thought you were going to say Hacksaw Dan Chip Ross. Duggan. It was Dan Ross. He set a record for catches in a, in a, in a Super Bowl. 11, uh, 11 catches, 104 yeah. yards, two touchdowns. Yeah, he was solid in that game, and they had the big. I remember Jim Hacksaw Reynolds like celebrating the goal line stop. It was huge. It was huge. One other thing about that Super Bowl, it was the first of John Madden's 16 Super Bowls. Wow. And he did them amongst four networks. He did was all- it always with Summerall? Or not necessarily. No, it wasn't always with Summerall. All right, but this was the very That's my first favorite one. Booth, bro, they were amazing. amazing. And and he the noteworthy thing is he did it with every single network. But this was the very first one, Super Bowl sixteen. Very cool. Sweet man, that's all I got on that one. Let, let's take it to uh, Super Bowl seventeen for the nineteen eighty two season, and Ogre, take it away. This one was really really cool. I thought the format of this year was super dope. Right, you had. Uh, super dope. It was super dope, man. You had nine game schedule, right? Because so cool. you had a you had a you had a strike, and what you had was seeding from one to eight. One played eight, two played seven. The whole you know it was just like a basketball tournament, but in football. And so that's how the the season played out in the playoffs. You had Washington eight and one. You had a real threat of going undefeated, right? Since you were only yeah. playing nine games, mm-hmm. there would have been an asterisk. Yeah, on probably. That shit. And you had Miami at seven and two. Um, they they ended up uh, winning with that very famous water you know watered down game against the Jets fourteen to nothing where AJ Dewey oh. uh, picks off three passes one of them right off of Richard Todd right remember that it was like a, like a fifteen yard scamper classic in, in, in that he bobbles muddy, it right yeah he, he bobbles, bobbles it. it and he's he's full of dirt from like head to yeah. toe because he's been playing the whole game in this fucking slop it was a great game fourteen nothing what wasn't great was a football game that was played in Super Bowl seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't cool, man, because everybody talks about John Riggins' run on that 43-yard run on 4th and 1 with 10 minutes and 10 seconds left. Mm-hmm. And, it, and the Dolphins were up, 
I think, 17 to 13 at the time. They were 10 minutes away from a championship. Forget that play. Earlier, there was a dropped interception by Kim Bocamper. Mm, that, that they never you. let him forget about but, that. But why was it that he dropped the pass? He should have jumped up and grabbed the tape, it. Right? Some, some, no, it, he should have jumped. Theisman came in. And, and slapped and it. And slapped it away. Yeah, he should have yes, jumped yes, up. Yes, yes, he yeah. should have jumped he, up yeah. and met that ball. Yeah, that that was the turning point in the game. And in that, my that, opinion. that was a walk in pick six. Yeah. That was at the end of the first half, right? Yeah, yeah it would have changed the whole. Would have changed the whole game. start. We were up first. Yeah, it was up like 14-10. This is not the one where Cephalo catches a bomb in the beginning. Yeah, he yes, does. He yes, does. that's okay. the one. It was like a 76-yarder. 76 yards. Yeah. And what's funny I is... I got that confused with the next one that I had. Right. It, it was a 76-yard pass. The Dolphins only had 170 yards offense yeah. total that game. It was the only thing they did right. Uh, they dropped that interception. And then you had that fourth down and one play. Don McNeil. McNeil. Dude, that guy was a great football player. He was player. great, but they great. had the Blackwoods. They had a great team. That was yeah. the, 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 the Killer, killer bees. bees, man, yeah. the Killer Bees. So he got trucked on that fourth and one, and he took it to the house, 41. And then Charlie Brown, not the animated <laughs> Charlie figure. Charlie Brown. How could you have a guy named Charlie? How could you knowingly name your son, oh, where are the Browns? Let's name him Charlie. They, that well, shit he probably would have called him Charles, right? Somebody, somebody lost their job because of Charlie awesome. Brown. <laughs> Some, somebody lost their job because of Charlie Brown. And then, and then Charlie Brown scores a six-yard insurance touchdown to put it away, 27-17. Last time, like, I, that's a real last time. It's a lot of peer pressure, good, bro. If your last yeah. name is Brown, you got to name your kid yeah. Charlie, bro. So that's that's what I got with Super Bowl 17. Uh, Super Bowl 18, who's got it? That's me, man. And that's, that's once again, uh, we're in 1984 now. Am I right? Am I skipping ahead, dude? I'm skipping it's ahead me. again. It's me. I'm, my bad. I another, always try another, to do that to you. Another interesting tidbit for that Super Bowl. Wasn't it Fulton Walker that returned the first kickoff? 98 yards. Yeah, man. Yeah, great return, man. To open man. the second half, I believe? <laughs> yeah. I would think so, yeah. yeah. Great return, man, for the Dolphins. Next Super Bowl we got is Super Bowl 18. Wasn't he a Raider, too? Fulton Walker? He might have been. Yeah, he was a Raider. I think he was a Raider later on after that. But the Raiders turned Super Bowl 18 into Black... Sunday, and they were the L.A. Raiders at this point, and they were bad. They had a dynamite team, but they went up against an even better team, the Washington Redskins, which ran the table. They were what? I believe they were 14-2 and two that year. The number one offense, the, the most points. They were plus 43 in turnovers. Jesus. They had the top run defense. They had the NFL MVP in Theismann. Riggins scored and the most touchdowns. Defending champs. And defending champs. Riggins, most touchdowns in a season at that point, 24. They had the Hogs. They had the leading. This is the first time this has ever happened. I believe it's the only time it's ever happened. They had the leading scorer, Mark Mosley, 161 points. Riggins came in second, 144 points. Okay, and the Raiders, they were 12 and 4. They were solid. They had a little, they had a guy in his second year, Marcus Allen out of USC, Heisman Trophy winner. <laughs> they Back scored the, the most points by any team in the AFC as as an AFT team up to this point in time. They nobody scored more than 38, and they walloped them. 38 to 9. They just annihilated them. Yeah, it was a kill. Derek Jensen blocks a punt, scores a touchdown. Jack Squirick picks off the ball. Interception on a little pass. Uh, um, it was a screen pass. Walks it into the. The Raiders are up 21 to 3 at the half. And then it's Marcus Allen time. MVP. 20 for 191. Most ever at that point. Two touchdowns. The classic. What is it, 40, 40, 42 Bob Trail, the 74-yard touchdown, outruns everybody, including Daryl Green, which was, I believe he was a rookie. NFL's fastest man yes. in the a few times. Two tidbits on this game. It was the last game announced by John Facenda for the Marvel, um, for, for the NFL films. <laughs> and it was... And it was also... I was thinking, fuck, you were in Marvel, dude? I, I want to fucking hear sorry, that, dude. I got comic books in the brain. I'm I might sorry. become a bigger Marvel I fan. I comic books in the brain. Captain America. And also, the famous 1984 commercial from Apple Macintosh premiered during the Super Bowl. What was wow. the commercial? The classic. It was... Uh, the, it was I, I forget. It was introducing Apple. It was the running, the girl running, and it was just... Um, it was a play on Big Brother and everything, and Apple was... 
crazy in that time. But I, I believe it only played a few more times. But that was the only national premiere showing of that film. Then it showed in a couple of other, you know, local markets, but nothing like that. It was never played again. Whoa. It was directed by, uh, oh, my God, Ridley Scott. Oh, wow. So, wow. Interesting. Um, yeah, the 80s right now, uh, we're in our fucking heyday right now, at least us. I know you're a little bit older than us, but like the, uh, I, just, when I think of my, uh, not that much, but a little bit, but maybe you're the same. Dude, That's why okay. I'm bringing this up. Okay. Like when I think of like fucking, damn man, those like nostalgia, mm -hmm. I just go to the 80s. The you 80s. go to the 80s or you go to the 70s? I go to the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I go to the 80s. Uh, starting at early like 80s. A, <laughs> 79, starting at the Rams Super Bowl. Uh, with the Pittsburgh, remember that? But not that? just football, overall. Like yeah. music, movies, uh, shit like that. Um, dude, I love uh, I love movies from pretty much all times. I, I, I love even old, classic, you know, 50s, 60s movies, uh, 70s. I think the 80s, I was a teenager, so it stands up big. But I love right. the 70s. The 70s was... I, I, saw, I saw Star Wars in the theater with my mom. Nice. And that was just blew my mind. Um, I saw Rocky in the theater, Rocky II. Um, but yeah, these are the Super Bowls starting like in 1970. I believe the first one I remember was 76 and then, and then 80 was massive. The Raider one, this, I remember, man, I, I, I went to school the next day in black and silver. Best the, day ever. The, yeah. Best day ever. <laughs> best day ever, you know, until that point. But I was in, they, they didn't sell jerseys at that time. So I just went in silver and black and I was on top of the world. The Raiders won the Super Bowl. That's funny, yeah, man. It was crazy. It was crazy, man. I loved it. Awesome. All right, we're moving to 84. This is the first game I ever remember watching in my life. Nice. 19 uh, Yeah, unfortunately, the Niners beat the Dolphins <laughs> 38 to 16. So, I'm like about 7 years old, about to be 8, and, and I'm in second grade, and I, I remember vividly being out in the car and I can only assume this is when the Dolphins won the AFC Championship, which gave them the right to be in the Super Bowl. People honking their horns on the street. And, like, you know, my family's just been here, like, fucking four years or something from Cuba. And that, like, that became so big that that made it into my household that my, my dad had never watched a football game. My mom had never watched a football game. My sisters probably didn't even know what fucking football was. But I remember everybody in my house was watching that fucking Super Bowl. And then now I think about it, I'm like, wow, that's fucking crazy, dude. Nobody, because I... That's my first game, but I didn't really start watching football till maybe five years later, really, mm -hmm. or four. So it was just, it was insane. And then I, I was like, I remember being like kind of depressed that nobody talked about it in school the next day. I'm like, dude, that was <laughs> such a big deal. Why is, no, why is my teacher not fucking making an announcement about this shit? And, um... Because it was, was a sad day, man. Yeah, no, nah, she day. didn't give a fuck. She was a bitch. I she must have been a Patriots fan. I actually fan. <laughs> saw them play in the playoffs. They played Seattle. I, I went to that game. I think Milton went to that I, game. I, I, it was the Seattle. I remember. I didn't go with Milton. I was in the <laughs> I was in the stands. I was with the, some other friends, and I remember coming out of that game and getting directly in line to buy tickets for the following week. And they were playing Pittsburgh. They beat Pittsburgh to go to that Super Bowl, and I got super sick and I couldn't make it to that to that championship game. Fuck. Yeah, crazy, bro. Crazy. Wow. Um. Dude, it was really not a contest after a while. It was just uh, the dominance of the Niners. It was billed as, you know, like two great yeah. quarterbacks, uh, Montana and Marino. Uh, fucking Marino was a pimp at this time, dude. He, he had fucking set, like, every fucking passing record, basically. The Marx Brothers? Yeah, he had the Marx <laughs> Brothers there with him. Um, what was the defense? The defense, was it the Killer Bees at this time? It was, it was waning. It still was a lot of the Killer Bees, but it wasn't as... It wasn't led to the point where it was against the Redskins. They weren't as strong. They weren't as strong. Right. Um, it was just so sad, dude. And it's so sad that that's the first game I ever remember seeing. And I never have seen them play a Super Bowl again. And I thought, this how is, crazy is that? This man? is going to happen all the time. How crazy. I'll see it again. Whatever. Never again. And that's uh, 84, doing some quick math, 36 years ago or something like that. Mm -hmm. Crazy. I mean, just by fucking math and by odds, you would think we would be in a fucking Super Bowl mm -hmm. at some point after that. But uh, no, we have not been in any Super Bowl. Um, I got another fucking page of notes here. It was so, it was so sad. Bro, bro, I'm not a Dolphin fan, but I was going for the Dolphins, man, because it's just amazing when the home team is in the Super Bowl. I mean, well, 
a team from your town is in the Super Bowl because, man, there was just so much joy leading up to that game. Bro, it was electric. Everybody was just, bro, everybody had a smile. Everybody was happy. Everybody was excited. And, man, wow. How do you feel when the Dolphins win? Are you glad? Of course, man. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to hate against them. I'm not going to. Dude, I want to see everybody happy, Unless dude. they play the Raiders. Unless they play the Raiders. Is that how you are? I but feel not, the same way. But they're not going to play in the Super Bowl, you know. But, uh, yeah, I like it when the Raiders beat them. I don't want the Raiders to lose. Of course. On the record, I'm not a Dolphins hater. Mm-hmm. Lions are my team. But if the Dolphins are playing, I root for the Dolphins. I do watch most of the Dolphin games. And I, I, I feel... That the Raiders and the Dolphins, man, it's just two different coasts, but they're the same teams because their history is pretty much... They're very intertwined. They're intertwined. AFL yeah. teams, they're once hit. great, now we no. suck. <laughs> it, it's like you're a Raider fan, you know what it feels like to be a Dolphin Our uniforms fan. uniforms are pretty cool. Yeah. I think we mentioned that in the Patriots uh, episode, yeah. too. That the, the Lions are like the uh, NFC version of the Dolphins. They are, yeah. 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 And I love uh, fucking, we haven't even talked about him, Al Davis, dude. He's one of my favorite characters in fucking NFL history, dude. I, I, wacky old man later, but like, dude, that guy was fucking badass, dude. He just came out like he, from nothing, you know, and then he got that team. And then like some of his sayings, dude, I love the opposing team's quarterback must go down and he must go down hard. I still think that shit fucking applies today, dude. You fucking, you playing Tom Brady, dude. I, I you got to hit him. I want you to fucking hit his <laughs> dude, ass, you need to dude, hit him right away. Yeah. Take, why don't teams take the 15 yarder right off the bat dude hit them hit them that's what i like about against, tennessee against that team of all nobody Fuck tom brady nobody's you gonna gotta hit them nobody's gonna say oh you hit tom oh no. fuck those people dude, dude you, you gotta why hit don't it, they man. do that I'm black and up. blue, bro. You got to be black and blue. Al Davis was going to be the commissioner. He was the AFL commissioner. He was, yeah. Yeah, man. He had a, a long-standing feud with uh, um, Cosa, uh, Roselle. Yeah. Bro, they hated each other. Yeah. They hated. I remember when they won in against Philly, just them giving, giving, handing over the trophy. That was like, everybody was like on pins and needles. What, is he going to shake? Are they going to, they're going to be cordial? That was incredible, man. That was incredible. Kind of like that uh, Goodell and uh, fucking uh, Kraft one. When yes. They, when they had, uh, yeah. Um, d- back to Marino for a second. First guy ever, 5,000 yards, 48 touchdowns. He breaks. Wow. We touched him on this one time. Blanda and Tittle's record of 36 from 1961 and 1962. <laughs> he doesn't just fucking break that record, dude. He fucking he shattered it. 12, like 25% more, dude, which is insane, you know. He had that quick release and just reading defenses ahead of time and just. Yeah, he broke it by week 12 against Oakland, actually. And, and this Bazooka was, arm. That was an amazing game. That throw. No, and then he had Howie Long hanging off of him. And Howie Long's like, I have no idea how he got that ball off. A, a I've little, never seen anything like it. Yeah. But you watch some of those games from this era, and this was pre, like, 5,000 surgeries on his knee and Achilles yes, and shit. He course. moved pretty good, dude. He moved fast. He had the mullet. He had the, mu- he had the hair, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he had the mullet for sure. That gave him extra style points. Yes. Um, <laughs> added to his fucking lore. Um, but, yeah, the, unfortunately, they couldn't fucking pull it out. And hopefully one day before I die, we'll come back and we'll fucking win one. Maybe against the Lions. How sweet, would, how, how sweet would that be, huh? Come, come on, bro. Can you imagine? We'll go to that shit, right? For sure. Hell yeah. I will fucking right. put my house up you for sale. To go yeah. To Super Bowl. You Super, going? Yeah, yeah, Super yeah. Bowl? Yeah, 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 for sure. Fucking Louisiana? Yeah, if they're there, some sure. shit like that. Fuck yeah, <laughs> Not Miami. Let's get the fuck, fuck out of this town. You want to come, Batista? You want to come, dude? <laughs> uh, I might watch that one from home. Or are you just fucking holding? Oh, I'll watch that one from home, bro. I'll cheer for you guys. All right. The teams are not exciting him. Um, <laughs> we're moving on to 1985. Which Super Bowl is, 20. That's you, Hoffa. You got uh, Chicago Bears versus the... The Bears. The, Patri- mm. the Patriots, which I'm sure you guys were going to be happy with this one because they got fucking annihilated 46 to 10 by the Bears. Uh, the Bears defense uh, led by fucking coach, legendary coach. Mike Ditka, and player also, Hall of Famer, uh, was playing in the Louisiana Super Bowl in the Superdome. Excuse me. Uh, and there were 73,000 in attendance. Uh, the Bears this season uh, were, the only, were only the second team in NFL history to only lose one game in the regular season. Uh, and who did they lose to? Uh, that ogre will have to look it up. I don't have to look no, it up. No, we don't have to. It, it, it was 
fucking amazing, it was man. Week 13. Magical, magical night. Magical, yeah. night. magical yeah. night. John, you know John, my brother-in-law, mm-hmm. he was there for that wow. fucking game. I envy him for that shit. Wow. Dolphins at home in the magical. Orange Bowl. Great place. You ever go to a game there, Ro? Like, you yeah, see yeah. I saw the playoff game. Oh, there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I went to a few games what there. What a fucking place to watch it a game, a, It dude. shook. It shook, I never man. got to go, unfortunately, for a Dolphin game, but I saw a lot of Kings games. It shook, game. man. That place Classic. here on the field. Yeah. You were yeah. right on top of them. Yeah, the, man. You were right on top of them. And, and fucking Dan Marino, fucking, and fucking Clayton, and Duper, and Nat Moore, and they just fucking punched them in the mouth. Dude, I remember they called, uh, they stopped the game because it was too loud. You rarely yeah. see this shit. Yeah. It was so loud that they couldn't Dude, fucking call crazy. a play, and they like, I think they gave them a penalty. Yeah, they I, gave the Dolphins a penalty for being too loud. I, I watched is, that one have at you home, ever seen? It was nuts. It was nuts, bro. that game, bro. God. And, oddly enough, if we would have beat the fucking Patriots in the AFC Championship, that would have been a rematch in the Super Bowl, and it would have been a better game than whatever the fuck this shit was, 46 to 10. No, it's Sorry, terrible. stealing your thunder, but... The fucking Dolphins should have been in that fucking Super Bowl, and they probably would have it's okay, fucking won it. It's okay. Patriots also, <laughs> Patriots also, Sorry. Patriots also beat the Raiders in that those playoffs too. So I was hurt oh, because of that too. God damn yeah, them! Man. God damn them! And the Raiders had a pretty damn good team. They had, a, I believe, Marcus Allen was the MVP that year for the NFL. That guy's a badass player. That year was amazing. When the Bears were favored uh, by ten points, uh, they fucking definitely covered. They had a fucking destructive defense. And they had the revolutionary at the time, the 46 defense, yep. which was pretty much created at that time. Now it's pretty common use by not a lot of teams, but some teams use it. Uh, notable Hall of Famers on the team. Uh, you had Coach Mike Ditka, uh, Richard Dent, Dan Hampton, Sweetness, Walter Payton, uh, Mike Singletary. And the, the Bears tied and broke Super Bowl records uh, with seven sacks. They had the they led they held uh, the Patriots the fewest uh, rushing yards with seven yards for the whole game. I think they had the the fucking uh, Craig uh, the Pony Express. What the fuck was his name? Craig dude? James. He was the last guy to rush, last white guy to rush for a thousand yards until I think Peyton Hillis did it a yeah. few years ago. That Craig was like James. his claim to fame. The Pony yeah. Express with uh, Eric Dirkerson. Yeah, SMU. And they beat the Patriots by thirty six points. Uh, Richard Dent was uh, awarded the MVP with one point five sacks, two forced fumbles, and a block pass, and a thirty second commercial. Back in 1985, was 550 thousand. Holy shit, man! It got expensive since the last time you said it, dude. <laughs> 550 thousand dollars. I think it was that Apple commercial. Yeah, it was the Apple, Apple it commercial. It just raised the game, you know. Um, dude, we have another CTE major player there too. Was it Dave Durson? Dave was, Durson, the safety. Was the safety. For the Bears. Yeah. You guys seen concussion with Will yeah, Smith? Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it. Man. Should I watch it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think so. All right. I'm that was the first it. Super Bowl I saw. First game period was Super Bowl Twenty. Well, well, at least for you guys me. saw the Patriots yeah, lose, dude. Yeah. That's a that's better experience. That. I did see that. That game's bittersweet for me in a way. I'm still pissed off at Dicka for not for getting, not giving for sweetness not, the for ball. not giving the ball at that goal line. Yeah, dude, that, I, I, I watched that game. It was gimmicky, dude. That broke my heart, bro. Because yeah. I loved sweetness, man. He's, He's probably fucking awesome. one of my favorite all time players, man. And to see that, man, it just hurt me to the core. It just hurt me to the <laughs> yeah, core. Yeah, it was weird. Um, but the Patriots lost the Super Bowl, dude, and that's a good thing, man. You know, <laughs> we can't. Uh, I love the Bears, dude. The, the, they, I, were, uh, they, oh, were, they were, they were, they were scary, bro. There was a couple of teams that I like. The Super Bowl Shuffle, Jim McMahon. And, yeah, uh, was it Jim McMahon? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Sounds kind of weird. Had, like the whole that video too. and stuff. Yeah, bro. The, the <laughs> Super Bowl Shuffle. Yeah, yeah. Willie Galt, I think, was a receiver Willie Galt. on that team. Um, the Perry, Perry, the refrigerator. Yeah. Yeah. The defense. He's the one that got the test on over sweetness. Was fucking all yeah. world, dude. Uh, fucking who were some of the Wilbur Marshall? I think it was one of the linebackers. Wilbur Marshall. Mike Singletary. Mike Singletary. Durison. They had Fensick. Another, Fensick. 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 That's, you mentioned Fensick is the one yeah. I was. I was thinking Fensick about. was like the safety. Yeah, think, he was or, a safety. Yeah. Richard Dent. Yeah. Badass fucking defense, but the Dolphins beat them. McMichael. McMichael. Yes. Jim Colbert. Yeah, Colbert the, the, was the, the defensive offensive lineman. Ta- offensive lineman. Yeah. yeah. There's another line. They were solid, bro. There's another lineman. They were solid, dude. Not McMichael. Yeah. Matt Suey. Oh, Matt Suey. That was a fullback. A fullback. There Matt Suey. Dan Hampton. 
Dan Hampton. Yeah. Wasn't he a wrestler? He was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I think he did one of the uh, WrestleManias, right? Yeah. I think yeah, McMahon did that. also. I, I could be wrong. No, I don't remember Jim McMahon. He might have, dude. With a dude, remember him with the the headband? Yeah, 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 bro. For sure, Roselle. Yeah, yeah. He got he got fined quite a bit. All right. Um, Super Bowl twenty one. Is that you over Super Bowl? Yeah, 21? I'm gonna try to speed up things with. A yeah, let's bit. go. Nineteen eighty six. I've seen the Super Bowl like a gazillion times because a family member recorded it because they're Giants fan. I've seen the Super Bowl like twenty times. When I was a kid, I was like addicted to football and I just watched it. So I've seen the Phil McConkey catch that ball <laughs> off of the bounce. It's fucking hit, right? Yeah, Is that and- the one? No, he bounced off of some he guy bounced, in the end zone, yeah, and yeah, he, he caught it. And then uh, Mark Bavaro had a thousand yards that year. He was an amazing player. And you had Joe Who's Morris, that? great, Joe great Morris. tight end, bro. Dude, he was great. Yeah. He was one of the him. first like awesome like tight ends. Yeah, bro. no, dude, he was he was the legit real deal. Not just a blogger, but he was a great. He, yeah, he was like a Dicka. He was the second yeah. coming of Dicka. And, and I was then, gonna say Dicka's yeah, the first fucking sure. pimp. And, and end, Joe sure. Morris had a, had fifteen hundred yards that year as a running back. They were ball control. Joe defense. Morris was like a little dude. He was right? a little dude. He caught you know he caught the ball well. He ran the ball well. And on defense, I mean, come on, that team L- was all defense, LT, dude. fucking cocaine, uh, Banks, Carl, <laughs> uh, Carson, uh, uh, Everson Walls, Mike, yeah. Mike uh, Haynes, who got, Everson who got, Walls, who got by the beat way. on the catch? By yeah, the way. Everson Walls, Everson Walls as a Cowboy got beat on the catch. This is a good team, but he was a great player. They were and, and Bill Belichick as a Jim Burt. Bill Belichick, fuck it, as a defensive yeah, coordinator. Yeah. So for just to move to the sake of moving nineteen, uh, who was the receivers on that team? Come on. Who the receivers? Uh, well, we were, was you had McConkey. You had McConkey. You had also this guy. Uh, was it Shepard? Mm. I think he was later. Maybe I'm thinking of the other Super Bowl that had a couple of memorable receivers. Yeah, but that team was like all defense, yeah, really. Damn it. Well, I don't think it was okay. important. Anyway, I'm done with 21 just to kind of move things. Is forward. that it? All right. All right. Um, I got 22, and it was it. it was held on January 31st, 1988, at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. It was between the Redskins and the Broncos. Final score: 42 to 10. Redskins came in as the, at 11 to 4. Broncos were 10 4 and 1. MVP. The real story of the Super Bowl was Doug Williams, first African American to start and win. And it was pretty much over in the second in the second quarter. He threw four touchdowns in that quarter. He was amazing eight, MVP, bro. Four just, touchdowns. Just, I remember they were losing ten nothing, ten nothing, and they just it was over. It was over at the half. And, and I remember they had a graphic on the screen that says no team has ever lost a After Super being Bowl up. being up ten nothing. It was like it was over that, really fast. That's a kiss of death when they yeah. put something like that up. Broncos were good too, man. They had Elway. They had the three amigos. But it was over. Sammy Winder. Sammy Winder. What is it? Ricky Natil. Yeah, well, Vance, Vance Johnson. Vance Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. yeah, they were freaking so I can't good. remember Carl, the other guys. Carl name. Mecklenburg. Carl remember Mecklenburg. Him? Number yeah, 75. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the middle linebacker, right? Yeah. And sure. also, um, Tim, Timmy, Timmy Smith out of nowhere. 204 yards. Breaks Marcus Allen's NFL record. NFL record, yeah. Two touchdowns. Is it still an NFL mm, record? Yeah, it's, a, so. it's a Super Bowl record. I mean, yeah, it's Super Bowl record. Yeah, nobody's yeah. come close to that. And that's pretty much it, man. Yeah, that that, that but thing it was, was a blowout and known for Doug Williams. Doug Williams basically came out of nowhere. He only, I believe, he only started five games that year. He took over for Jay, Jay Schro- Schrader because yeah. he wasn't effective, and then I think he got hurt. Like or he some was crap. during most yeah. of his career. Yeah, yeah. He went to the Raiders after that in a trade, which at the big time, big arm. Uh, he had big, a big arm, arm, man. But the guy was. No, oh, inconsistent. so inconsistent. They gave up Jim Lachey, a future. I think that guy should be in the Hall of Fame. He he might be. I didn't know that. He dude. might be. They, oh, gave up, they gave up. They gave for Jim Lachey, man. Why he made, would you do that? He made the hogs. He made oh the hogs God. after you know he was like the second coming of the hogs. That's got to be one of the most it was uh, horrible, underrated man. worst trades of yeah. all time. Yeah, dude. it changed. Because you Raiders could pick up a Jay bad. Schrader. You could you could pick you, him up off the fuck. Like he could have been cut next week or some shit. Exactly, Jesus. Bro. Exactly, and he was. Doug Williams took over for him. If the Raiders would have had just anybody like semi competent during that era with yeah. Bo Jackson yeah. and fucking mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Marcus, Marcus Allen, Allen and fucking Tim Brown yeah. and fucking uh, Swerving Mervin Fernandez, Swerving and Mervin all Fernandez, these fucking guys, yeah, yeah. dude, they would have been fucking awesome. Man. Yeah, yeah, it hurts. All right, I'm hijacking your Super Bowl. It's okay, we'll, we'll but wait. no, that was it. That was, that was pretty much it. Doug Williams was the the big standout man. That second quarter, the guy, 
That guy, that guy was yeah, amazing. Yeah, he game. crushed it. He crushed it, bro. He crushed Hoffa, it. Hoffa, you're up, dude. We're going to Super Bowl 20. Is this 23? 23. 1988 season. Played in January 1989. Cincinnati And then Bengals I think we're going to do one Niners. more after that, and then we're going to wrap it up for part one. So hit it. We got the uh, Super Bowl 23 was the Bengals versus the Niners. Rematch uh, of a few years before. Yes, it was. Yeah. And the Niners, uh, I mean, if you are li- you live in Florida and you're a Niners fan, you pretty much lived through this era here. Uh, the Niners were at the top of their game. They were stacked. They were, bro. Completely. And they were they won 20-16, to 16, which is a pretty close game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the head coach for the Niners was Bill Walsh, the legendary Bill Walsh. We haven't mentioned him. My God. Yeah. yeah. God. Actually, my, my sister lived in California for 10 years, and she's a social worker. And when Bill Walsh was dying of cancer, she used to... Like take him as meds oh and my wow, goodness. be after him. Yeah, holy shit! And she had no idea who he was. And she asked oh, me, "Do you ever heard of a guy named Bill Watson?" I'm like, yeah, Fuck a little yeah. bit. I think I might know who he is. Oh. Yeah, but uh, it was played in Joe Robbie Stadium here in Florida in Miami. And I still was, call it that. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was yeah, like, yeah, it's much. still Joe Robbie Stadium. Yeah, to me. yeah, yeah, for yeah sure. I'm yeah. sorry. And John Candy was in the stands. Yes, <laughs> yes. There's a story yes, that Joe there's Montana a story. <laughs> on that winning drive. On the drive. To him and he says, like, hey, that's John Candy. <laughs> there what was a fucking <laughs> cool customer. I hated him Canadian, at the time. Canadian no, bro, guy. Was a no, I hated him. He that was my. Was he was ice. Tom Brady for me before Tom. Now yes. I can appreciate him, but I hated right. him, especially because that's the first game I ever saw. He just broke my heart when yeah. he beat. But now looking back at him, what a fucking cool yeah, customer, cool. dude. Like, yeah, bro. Fucking yeah, there's John Candy. I'm about to fucking drive us 80 yards to win this game, you know, whatever. <laughs> Fuck, man. Dude, and he did Bro, that. Can you imagine being in that huddle and your quarterback says that? It's like, dude, we got this. Bro. Yeah, bro. This guy's not worried at all. We got this. Crazy. Amazing. Crazy. But, this uh, is his third Super Bowl, right? Third yeah, Super Bowl. Third Super Bowl. It was uh, Joe Robbie, like I said, and it was uh, 75,000 in attendance. Uh, notable Hall of Famers on the Niners, Bill Walsh, of course. Uh, Charles Haley, Ronnie Lott, Joe Montana, of course, Jerry Rice, of course, and Steve Young. On the bench. On the bench. bench. Wow. Amazing enough. Just in case. (laughs) It was a very tight game. Uh, It went back and forth, and until 34 seconds left in the game. This uh, is Boomer Esiason, right? This is like every NFL films, Montana to Taylor, 34 seconds left. Dagger through the heart of the Bengals. Old Boomer never won a fucking Super Bowl. This was, was Boomer Esiason. Uh, was it the Icky Shuffle time, too? With yes. The, the, the yes. It was Icky Shuffle. Icky James Woods. James Woods. They had fucking a, good backfield, they man. They had the... Yeah. Who was the... Oh, it was James Brooks. Ja- James Brooks. And it was Brown from the from the U. Yeah, Eddie. Yeah. Eddie Brown. Eddie Brown, Brown I, think that they, guy. They, I think they still had Collinsworth, too. They had Collinsworth. Yeah. And Eddie Brown actually was drafted ahead of Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice went to a small school though, so yeah, I almost it was like can't. Mississippi Valley yeah, State. Right. Or something. I don't even know if they exist today. Yeah. I mean, back in '88, if you know you're a fan or you hated the Niners, I mean they were a fun team to watch, bro. Like the, the the offense was fucking ridiculous. The defense was great. I mean, the offense was they had the probably the greatest receivers. Yeah, the tandem, the big, yeah. one of the greatest tandems. I ever. think Jerry Rice is the greatest player in NFL history. They had Roger Craig I in the give backfield. It to Peyton. Who do you give it Peyton. to? Peyton. Peyton Manning. No, no, not Peyton. No, I mean Walter, Walter Payton. Payton. Yeah. Walter Payton. Who do you, who's the greatest player in NFL history, Hoffa? Oh, Barry Sanders. Thank you. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Mic drop. And then, like, if you weren't biased, what would you say? Barry Sanders. Thank you. Who's the greatest player in NFL history, Ogre? Greatest player I've ever seen, Barry Sanders. And I'm not saying that because... Is that the, thank you. Is that the greatest player thank in NFL you. history? It's the greatest player I've ever seen, yeah. period. I mean, I saw things... I'm, he did things I've never seen before. Yeah. Oh, yes. He was an amazing player. I'm yeah, not, I'm not taking anything yeah. away from him. Like, who did you say? Payton? You said uh, Walter, Walter Payton. Payton. Yeah. I got to go with Jerry Rice. Anyways. For me, it's Jerry Rice and Payton. Those are my two. Yeah. Where do you put Jerry Rice? He's right behind Mary Sanders. I mean, for a receiver, he's, he's... Yeah, he would be two. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, three. Marino, four. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron oh, Rodgers. Oh, come on. Get the fuck Aaron out of here. Aaron Rodgers. No, I, no, love you lost me. I love him, dude. Are you kidding yeah. me? I think Look at his like numbers. A... Look at his numbers, dude. He throws no, no, like two no, no, picks no, no, no. a come year. On. Come and, on. And Look at the, the game today. Wait, hold on. Wait, more shocking than that was Marino. Uh, dude, I'm the biggest 
Look at me. Dude, I got my I've, old gold to Marino color. But he's not top 10 even, dude. Dude, Come Aaron, on. he's done some throws that I've never seen before, dude. Hey, you, you know need what? To get out more. You know what? Before this, Jim Brown. Before it's over, the kid for KC Mahomes. He might be. He might. He yeah, might he's going to set a case for it. That guy's. Dude, I've seen some special. I've seen some throws by Rogers sidearm. It doesn't matter what direction Mahomes his arm is. is going to take it to You need to watch level. more Lions game, bro. Stafford does the same throws. Stafford's underrated. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm Thank sorry, you. bro. Thank we got you. off on a 10. Well, where, do you, where do you put Walter Payton? Where do you guys put Walter Payton? Running back? Running back? No, we're overall. talking greatest of all time. He says he's the greatest of all time. I, I, to me, I think I got to put LT before Lawrence Taylor. L- Lawrence Taylor. LT's up there. Lawrence Taylor. You're definitely. Too controversial. LT's up there. No, oh. I agree with him. Dude, Lawrence, up there. Lawrence Taylor was best a game defensive, changer. Best defensive player? I. Yeah. He's the best. Dude, I gotta, For me, it's LT and, Ron, and Ronnie Lott. It's 1A <laughs> and 1B. I can't That's put it. a defensive player up there, man. What? He changed the game, dude. Dude, and Ronnie Lott? Dude, he won like he was like all pro in like every position in the in his. In, he was, I mean, if you're gonna throw LT up there, you gotta throw Ray in. Lewis up there, dude. Ray Lewis, yes. No, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't I put can't. him that high. I mean, dude, Ray, that guy fucking single handedly like beat a fucking got a Super Bowl for the fucking. If Ravens, you want to talk dude. defensive players, I'll throw Deion Sanders at you. No, dude, they yeah. wouldn't even throw to his side. They yeah. just said, yeah. you know what? We cannot. he's up there, but not ahead of Ray Lewis and LT, bro. Ray yeah. Lewis, you remember the battles against the Titans? I do. Oh, my God. I remember he killed somebody, too. Yeah. But <laughs> Deion Sanders. No, that doesn't get brought up. Anymore. No, that doesn't get enough props. At, at I'll bring it up right now. Fucking Ray Lewis killed somebody. Yeah, but his homeboy did the fall. That, that guy, like, super fall. swept under the rug, right? Yeah, and he's yeah. on, like, when I saw him on, like, NFL shows preacher, and shit, man. I'd be like, why the fuck's this guy on? Anyways, but Deion Sanders, very under, I don't want to say underrated, but, dude, they would not, they would just say, that half of the field, nah. don't fuck with it. Throw over there. Whoever's there. That guy played receiver a year, mm-hmm. and he fucking held his own playing receiver. Great return, man. If you want to talk defensive players, that guy was a well. Pretty look, fucking the truth of it is, is that you're springing this on me like in, in the 12th I'm hour. I'm springing bro. it, dude. Like, he, he was you got, he having was, me to think of what the top ten players look sweetness. He carried the football in a way that I'd never saw before. Right, just yeah. flat out, and he never fumbled. Never and fumbled. I felt genuinely bad for him when his career ended in that game against Washington and he's on the sidelines yeah. with his ha- hands in his, his head in his hands yeah. and they cut to commercial and that's how his career ended. Yeah. I felt genuinely bad. I must have been like 13 years old. That guy I, was class. It was, it was because, amazing. Because that guy was class, bro. Class. You know what the saddest moment of me other than that Super Bowl I told you about with the Dolphins losing was when Bo Jackson got fucking hurt against the Bengals against, the, against Bengals. the Bengals and it was on a long he was gone and the guy caught him and he oh, dude that would have been anybody hurt. else he would have never gotten hurt that but was, if it was Bo Jackson the and way that guy tackled happened, him it was just awkward like I was running so fast I mean Bo Jackson was so such a freaking nature his own strength his hurt strength him and his speed play, hurt him in that because play he, it, it like jammed it he, like jammed yeah, into him he yeah. pulled so hard with his strength to get out of that tackle that he pulled his own fucking yeah. hip out of its fucking That's socket. That's crazy, dude. And that dude, I, that, that guy was fucking that guy was amazing, man, that, dude. Man, that game in 85 when they were in the the, the, the kingdom against Seattle and he, he busts off the corner and he goes 85 yards. And all is you that the do, one he runs through a tunnel? Where he runs through yes. the tunnel and all you see is a hash marks just flying underneath his feet. I'm doing my homework as a kid and I look up and I, <laughs> I couldn't believe how fast that guy was you running, jerking dude. off, tell You're the truth. All, no. <laughs> Bro, that, that was amazing, bro. I and then the were. other one with the, the helmet in the straight in the chest of Bosworth. You're, no, you're thinking of Earl Campbell. No, oh, no, 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 no. No, Bosworth. It, Bosworth. He, crushed he, Bosworth. he crushed Bosworth like at the one yard line. Oh, I don't remember. And yeah. Bosworth yeah. was Dude, done. That was it. You same never heard game, right? Same game. Oh, you right. never heard. Right, right. You never heard of Bosworth again. You, after exactly. That. You remember that Earl Campbell run where he puts his head yes. into that ram? Of course. Ram, it was and and his his jersey got torn off. That was against the Raiders. Earl Campbell's and that was against Tatum. Who, that, who who put someone into like a paralysis? Daryl Stingley. That's right. Daryl Stingley. He put. He, Give he, him a stinger. He, yeah, and and you know how sad that was. I believe that was a preseason game. Yeah, it was seventy five. <sighs> yeah, seventy five, seventy six. Uh, fucking, and I'm a baseball fan at the time too. So like, I'm watching Bo Jackson play baseball. Yeah, I'm watching Bo, Bo Jackson, Jackson play football. Oh, you remember when he broke the? Ba- he didn't even use his. Yeah, he, on, the the his head, on the top of his head. On the top of his. Remember he, the Spider Man? Yeah, you do the when climbing. When he ran up, when he ran up the wall, the spider, the, the wall walk. Oh, if you ever want to see a cool baseball game, I know a lot of people say baseball is boring and whatever. Look up this game on YouTube. It's 1989 Yankees versus Royals. It's Bo Jackson. On the Royals, Deion Sanders on the Yankees, Bo Jackson hits three home runs, 
Uh, Deion Sanders hits a line drive to Bo Jackson in center field. Bo Jackson dives. He misses it. Deion Sanders does an inside. My bad. Does an inside the park home run. It's, yep. it's a fucking awesome game to watch for baseball. Super exciting. Something you'll never see today. Two fucking NFL players going at it head to head in a baseball game. Crazy. Unfortunately, you'll probably never, never see that again. No, I don't think so. The money's not necessary for them at that time. You know, yeah. they weren't getting paid big time. Yeah. yeah. Reclassifying this one, I would put Marino ahead of Rogers. Of course you would. <laughs> no, I had to please, rethink that. Please do. I had to, I had I'm to rethink that. I'm losing respect for you. I had that to rethink another, that. You know I had what? to rethink that. Autogram. Autogram. Is that the might be a different time. show. Yeah. I think that's a whole show. In yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in getting in off. Itself. Are we done with 88? Not yet, though. All Not right, yet. go ahead. I, I, need, I have a tidbit once you're done. What was the cost of an app? No, you already told us. <laughs> Not yet. Was it the Dairy Bowl? The former. Actually, I was going to say, even if you're a fan or you hated the Niners. They were a great offense or a great defense to watch. It was a great team to watch. It was an exciting they team to solid. watch. And Jerry Rice was arguably the best receiver to date arguably. that we've seen. Yeah. Without a doubt. And he was the Super Bowl MVP in the 1988 season. And he caught 11 passes for 215 yards and one touchdown. And he ran for five yards. And a 30-second commercial at that time. <laughs> <laughs> here it comes. Here it comes, guys. Was $675,000. That's pretty affordable. Still, That's just getting up there, man. All right. Uh, let's move it to 1989, and we're going we're gonna to break part one after 1989 because we're getting uh, a little bit um, long in the tooth here. We're getting a little slow. So, 1989, we got the Niners in there again. They're in their fucking heyday. And yeah. here's the poor Broncos still trying to win a Super Bowl. <laughs> they get... <laughs> Fuck, they get annihilated. They get destroyed. 55 to 10. Blowout city. Even though it's Montana versus Elway. Um, I, th- I remember at this point, just to bring it back to like what I'm going through at the time, I'm getting big into Sports Illustrated. Sports Illustrated was so big. You guys ever yeah. got into Sports Illustrated? Yeah, I used to have it. Of course. Have, yep. It was like so cool to get that magazine. And you're just like, oh, let me, you know, because you would still get, we didn't have any internet. There was no like, internet, no. You know, this Nothing. is like, you're getting real. This Playboy is, and Sports Illustrated. Yeah. yeah. This is, you're getting the real shit right there. And they had uh, excellent writers. Form. And it was excellent writers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The writers were legendary. Dr. And Z. And awesome pictures. Dr. Z. Yeah. And um, so fourth Super Bowl loss for the Broncos ties them with the Vikings for most Super Bowl losses. It, it's still to this day the most lopsided Super Bowl loss ever. Eight touchdowns. For the Niners. Uh, Joe Montana's last Super Bowl appearance and win played in the Super Bowl. Um, we mentioned it earlier. I don't want to keep going. He was driving a Corvette, dude. He had fucking Rice, Craig, Taylor, <laughs> Brent Jones, Tom Rathman, Steve Young on the bench with a 1,000 yards and eight touchdowns yeah. that season. You he know? was stacked. Yeah, dude. He, in their defense, uh, Kina, not Tina Turner, Kina Turner, <laughs> Matt Millen, Romanowski, Ronnie Oof. Lott. Um, the Broncos had a little... They were inconsistent. Bobby Humphrey was a running back um, who was a good pass catcher. Dolphins had him later. Um, and they had come off beating the Browns like a lot of times in the AFC Championship game. Some oh, of that, those named that games. Might have, the, the, the drive. The drive. The, drive. the, fumble. the fumble. Yeah. Um, Steve Atwater, Dennis Smith, one of the Ooh. best uh, safety tandems. Atwater. Yeah. Talking about a Hall of Fame, he needs to be in there. Man. He's not in? He's not oh, in. Oh, wow. No. That guy was a freaking hammer. Yeah. So that – that's all I got on 89. You guys remember how many? It was a blowout. My kind of contribution boring. to 89 was for NFL Films. Red 59 laser. Remember that? It was from this game. When then he changes the play and hits Jerry Rice deep on a play. Hell yeah. Fucking dude. Great fucking great team. Uh, but kind of the end of their run because I think Joe ends up getting hurt later with that back problem. Well, then he gets traded, right? He gets traded to KC. That was so weird to see him on a Chiefs uniform later. Wearing wearing 19. Yeah. Yeah. He was good. They had some good teams there, too. With Marcus Allen. Yeah, Marcus Allen went there, The original vulture. He would come in and get those one-yard touchdown runs after the other guy did all the work. Um, (laughs) Guys, we're going to break right here. At 1989, and we'll pick up with 1990 next episode. I want to thank Raul, Hialeah Comic Bro. Where, where can they find out about your stuff? Where can they watch your show? On YouTube, channel's Hialeah Comic Bro. It's heavy on comic books, but got some more stuff coming up soon. Movies, sports, and just trying to branch out. But Hialeah Comic Bro, YouTube. Thank you so much. Hell yeah. Thanks, Thanks for, for having coming, me, dude. man. I really appreciate it, bro. Thank you, bro. 
And thanks for watching, guys. If you like the video, subscribe. Thanks to Ralph Varela for the badass intro music we got. And that's all we got for you today, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Peace.